just this side of the Orioles' third base dugout. All right? Business about to get underway. Serious business between the Orioles and the Oakland A's. Game two of the American League Championship Series. The Orioles lead one victory to none. Game three tomorrow in Oakland. Here we go with game two as McNally takes on Burt Campanaris. Let's bring in Chuck Thompson. Thank you very much, Bill O'Donnell. Good afternoon, everybody. The left-hander's opening pitch is fast and low, and the ball runner are underway. The right-hand swinging Campanaris, a 250 hitter on the year for the Oakland Athletics. And yesterday had one hit in uh, three official at-bats, reached twice, once on a walk, stole a base. Fly ball, well hit, deep alley, left center field, Blair and Bunbury racing after it. It is gone, a home run for Campanaris. Into the Oriole bullpen, a deep left center field. Campanaris hits a one nothing pitch out of the ballpark. It's his fifth home, his fifth home run of the season and his first home run against the Orioles this year. And Oakland, just like that, takes a very quick one to nothing lead over Dave McNally and the Orioles. McNally in 29 and two-third innings against the Oakland A's this year had thrown five home run pitches. And uh, one of the key performers in everything that Oakland does, Burt Cavanaugh starts the ball game with a home run. Oakland one to nothing, and Rudy gets the ball one low and outside. Rudy, uh, yesterday afternoon, against the magnificent effort of Jim Palmer, failed to hit in two official at-bats. He walked twice. Right-handed swinger, and the kind of a fellow who can do a lot of things with a bat, and the kind of a man that you could say will take the ball where it is pitched. McNally's 1-0 to the right-hand swinging Rudy is hit high in the air toward right fielder Rich Coggins. Coggins is moving toward the foul line, setting up under it now. The right fielder gloves it, and that's the first out of the ball game as Rudy has sky to the right fielder. Batter number three will be Sal Bando. Bando against Palmer yesterday afternoon. Failed to hit in three trips. He struck out. He grounded a third. He walked. And he flied to left field. Sal Bando on the season. A 288 swinger and a good, tough, long ball hitter is Bando. And a lot better than you would think with a glove. McNally is high and outside. A ball one. Earl Williams doing the catching for the Orioles this afternoon. With Brooks Robinson at third, Mark Belanger at short, the second baseman Bob Gritch, and the first baseman is Boog Powell. Now the one nothing pitch to the right hand cutting Bando. It's a breaking ball over the inside corner beneath, and a strike is called. One ball, one strike to Bando. The Oriole outfield deep and around toward left against the power swing to Bando. With Al Bumbry in left field, Blair in center field, and Rich Coggins the right fielder. McNally throws. He's too low, and the count is two balls and one strike. The umpire behind the plate in game two is Bill Haller at first base, Nestor Shylack at second base, George Maloney at third base, Jim Odom. McNally's 2-1 is a high foul. This will be out of play into the seats behind the plate. And the count levels off now at two balls and two strikes. The umpire is on the foul lines. Merrill Anthony down the left field side and Larry McCoy down the right field side. The crowd this afternoon for the second game of the American League Championship Series is indeed bigger than yesterday's opening day crowd of 41,279. McNally's 2-2 two -two to Bando is inside low, and the count fills now at three balls and two strikes. Full count, a 3-2 payoff pitch to the Oakland third baseman. McNally steps and deals. Here's a ball four inside and low, and Bando has reached for the base on balls, and McNally is having problems in the first inning. Somewhat similar to the problems uh, that Jim Palmer faced as he opened up against uh, Oakland yesterday, walking the first two batters. But then, a fantastic exhibition of pure power pitching as Palmer came racing back and struck out Bando, Jackson, and the designated hitter to end the Oakland half of the first inning. This afternoon, the leadoff batter, Burt Campanaris, the little man in the batting order for the Oakland A's, has powered a home run. And Oakland leads one to nothing. Rudy fly to the right fielder. Bando is walked. And now here is the big man in the Oakland batting order, Reggie Jackson. One for four yesterday afternoon. The left hander throws way outside by Williams to the screen. And now the second base goes Bando. And the official scorer ruling will be coming down the line in a moment. And it will be a wild pitch. Ball on the count to Reggie Jackson. Jackson yesterday in four trips against Jim Palmer, struck out the first two times, and then hit a scorching line drive right back through the middle that came within that much of hitting Palmer. And then in the eighth inning, in his last at-bat, Jackson forced a runner. So he went one for four. Had the great figures in the regular season, did Reggie Jackson. 
a 293 batting average, 117 runs batted in, 32 home runs. One ball, no strikes, Bando at second and one out. McNally kicks and fires, high foul ball is looping to the seats in the upper deck. So we've got a count of a ball and a strike. In game two, Dave McNally, a seasoned veteran campaigner, against a seasoned veteran campaigner in the person of the right-handed Jim Catfish Hunter. These are a couple of fellows that, like most pitchers who are capable of winning as consistently as McNally and Hunter have won in the past few years, certainly can be called money pitchers. McNally is slowing down just a little bit right now, reading signs flashed by Earl Williams. A look back to check on Bando at second base, and now the 1-1 offering to the waiting Reggie Jackson. Another foul ball looping toward the seats down the third base side, and the count to Reggie is a ball and two strikes. In regular season play against the Orioles this year, Jackson hit at a 2.39 pace. He hit three home runs, but he knocked in six. And what a complete ball player is Reggie Jackson with the ability to truthfully do it all. Now the one ball, two strike offering. McNally ready once more. The Oriole left-hander holding the set now, steps and delivers. Here's a foul ball again out of play. Jackson, the kind of a hitter who can and does hit for the average. On the year, he hit 293. He hits with power, 32 home runs and 117 runs batted in. He's an outstanding defensive player with a very strong and accurate throwing arm and with better than average speed as he stole 22 bases in the season. Reggie Jackson facing Dave McNally with a count of ball and two strikes. And neither in too much of a hurry. McNally uh, just taking a little time, made a couple of grabs at that rosin bag. He is having trouble here in the opening inning. Cabanera's homer, it's one to nothing open. Bando at second with one out. Now the one-two offering to Jackson. McNally's pitch, fly ball, center field. Blair is coming up toward the alley and right center getting under it. The Orioles center fielder is there. He's got it and that will be the second out of the inning. Two down in the Oakland half of the first inning, and now here comes Gene Tennis. Yesterday, Tennis had one hit in four trips. A single to center field in the second inning against Baltimore's Jim Palmer, and then popped to the shortstop once and to the second baseman twice. Tennis on the year against Baltimore Hurling, hit 244. He knocked in eight runs. He also hit four home runs, did Tennis, against the Orioles pitchers. Tennis, a right-handed swinger with power. He had 24 home runs and knocked in 84 on the season for the Oakland A's. A right-handed batsman deep in the box, and McNally is ready. Here's his first offering to Tennis. It's a little bit high inside and a ball. A great crowd in Baltimore for this Sunday afternoon game, game two of the American League Championship Series. This crowd is a good bit bigger than yesterday's opening crowd. Now the one nothing pitch. McNally working steadily. Hits the set position, checks Bando at second, and is one nothing to tennis. Is a strike over the inside corner of the A ball and a strike. The post-game comments from the Oakland A's yesterday afternoon were just about the same. They could not say enough complimentary things about the Baltimore right-hander Palmer. Oakland manager Dick Williams said he was just super, absolutely super, and in truth he was. Now the 1-1 offering coming down to tennis. McNally ready. The left-hander fires. Curveball and a strike two call. Ball and two strikes. A quick snapping curveball from McNally. So he is now ahead of the batter tennis to the count of a ball and two strikes. After the game today, the Oakland A's and the Orioles will wing out to Oakland Alameda County Coliseum and will resume play tomorrow afternoon. 3.30 Baltimore time, 3.30 Eastern time. A ball and two strikes to count to tennis. Bando at second and two out. McNally is ready to go. A double look to check the runner. Now the pitch. He's low and away. So that'll make the count two and two. Catfish Hunter against Dave McNally. And these are the pressure-packed games of baseball. As you wing down through the final uh, games of any baseball season, if you're in a race for divisional honors, of course, they are pressure games. But the championship series is a bit something else. The two-two pitch to the right-hand swinging tennis. McNally throws, strike three, four. Hard breaking ball inside corner above the knees, and tennis is called out on strike. At the end of the half inning, Oakland one and Baltimore nothing. Well, just as Earl Weaver, the manager of the Oakland, uh, the Baltimore Royals, had some ideas on tonight's game, so did Dick Williams of the Oakland A's and Army Sergeant Preston Clough 
Ask them about the game. Yeah, our lineup will be the same with Hunter Gunning, although I have uh, Switch Tennis and uh, Dan Johnson there uh, in the order. Tennis will hit fifth, and Dan Johnson, the president here, will hit sixth. Oh, I just say that. You see, uh, forcing any problems uh, with the Orioles today, different problems with the uh, addition of uh, Bumbry and Coggins in the lineup. Well, kind of tell on this. Uh, we didn't score a run off Palmer. He was uh, just too much for us, I guess. Uh, best I've ever seen him throw, and he was throwing some fine ball games. But uh, he was a little too much for us yesterday. We have to reverse it today. Good, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Good luck to you. Thank you. Tommy Sergeant Preston Clough of AFRTS Sports talking with Oakland A manager Dick Williams, who, as he pointed out, doesn't plan any major changes in his lineup for Game 2 of the American League Championship Series at Memorial Stadium, Baltimore. Well, Catfish Hunter getting ready right now to take on the Orioles. He has a lead of one to nothing. The Orioles, of course, have seen Catfish Hunter a lot in uh, recent years. But perhaps the fellow who knows him even better because he was a teammate of the Catfishes is Tommy Davis. Davis will bat here in the opening inning, and uh, does Tommy Davis think maybe it's an extra plus to have played with Catfish in years gone by? Well, it is, you know, everybody knows Cat. You know, he's, you know, slide the ball, fastball pitcher, in and out, and he's and he's always around the plate. He's a good pitcher. Uh, what is, there's not very much to know about it. It's, you, you know, he tries to get ahead, and and uh, you know, really, if you're if you're looking for the ball and light, you're not looking for a long ball, and just want to hit a line drive, you should try to get him before he gets ahead of you. Okay, Bill, thank you very much, and thank you, Tommy Davis, and we'll now take a look at Catfish Hunter. Hunter, a 21-game winner, lost only five. And on the year against the Orioles, he was a bit something else. He went three victories without a defeat, and a great ovation. Great youngster Al Bumbry. Between Bumbry and the man who will follow him to the plate, Rich Coggins, manager Earl Weaver, and the Orioles added quite another dimension to their style of baseball in 1973. Exciting is uh, one of the words I think that perhaps would aptly describe uh, what Bumbry and Coggins have brought to Baltimore baseball this year. They have both hit better than 300. Here is Bumbry, and the first pitch is a ball low and outside. Bumbry, a left-handed batter with just much better than average speed, a 337 average on the year, 23 stolen bases, and I'll tell you, a lot of people are just uh, torn trying to figure out which of the two could be perhaps the rookie of the year. Hunter throws, he's low and inside, and the count of two balls and no strike to the left-hand hitting Al Bumbry. With speed, the likes uh, of which Bumbry brings to a ball game, it forces infielders to be a little bit tight. You cannot play a routine ground ball in a routine manner. He'll beat you. The 2-0 to Bumbry, ball three is outside. And you can hear this great big partisan crowd in Baltimore hoping that something can happen in the bottom of this inning to equalize the Campanaris home run that opened the ball game that gives Oakland a one nothing lead. Hunter's 3 nothing pitch to Bumbry as they fall for, and Bumbry is on. The Catfish, in 256 in the third innings this year, walked only 69. Normally, I'm sure you would agree with me, he is an outstanding control pitcher. And now a good ovation building for the other half of this sometimes dazzling duo, Rich Coggins. Coggins on the year, hits 319. A leadoff walk to Al Bumbry. Tennis moves in to take the bag with a base runner. The Oakland infield is up uh, as they were to Bumbry a moment ago, an almost double play depth against Bumbry with nobody on. They are certainly in it now with Coggins. Left-handed hitter with surprising power at times. Hunter's pitch to Coggins. A slow curveball works its way over, and the strike is called. The Oakland outfield has Angel Manguel well around toward the alley in right center. And straight away in right field and not too deep is Reggie Jackson. The left fielder, Joe Rudy, is uh, toward the alley in left center. The pitch to uh, Coggins, a line drive, base hit through the middle of the center field. Bumbry around second, on her play to third, the center fielder misplayed the ball. Bumbry is around third and they hold him there. drive base hit through the middle by Rich Coggins and these kids who have done it all year for the Orioles have started something in the very first inning against the veteran Jim Catfish Hunter. A walk to Bumbry, a single to center field by Coggins and Bumbry just rips around the third base. A single to Rich Coggins we had heard a uh, 
in the backdrop, something that's attracted our attention. Perhaps that there's been an error charge, but that is not the case. It is just a single as Bumbry went racing around the third. And here now is Tommy Davis, who has just been absolutely fantastic against the Oakland A's this year. Oakland won, Baltimore nothing, nobody out, runners first and third, and Davis at the plate. The pitch to Tommy is a strike called knee high on the outer portion. Yesterday, the Orioles designated hitter Tommy Davis had three hits in five trips. And on the year has been just unreal. The pitch to Tommy is a curveball and a strike two is called off the outside corner for me. Davis with a very quick look for the plate umpire Haller as if to say, nah, don't believe it. Tommy Davis on the year against the Oakland A's hit 513. Hunters, two strike pitch, a ground ball hit towards the second baseman. He bobbles, now recovers, throws the second one back to first. No, they don't get Tommy Davis for the double play. And the tying run has scored. As second baseman Green got to the ground ball, he just didn't feel it as cleanly or as quickly as he would like to have. He got it to Campanaris and that fourth target. The relay throw, Campanaris for the first baseman tennis, was just not quite in time to get Tommy Davis. So the tying run has scored, as Davis has forced Coggins at second base, and Tommy has the run batted in. It is a tie ball game in the bottom of the first inning. Oakland won on the Campanaris home run, and now the Orioles won, and here is Boo Powell. Powell, who sat it out yesterday, is in against the right-handed Jim Catfish Hunter. The pitch is cut out and missed at strike one. Powell on the year against the Oakland A's hit 241 with a double and two home runs, and he knocked in six. Now the one strike offering to Boog Powell, a foul ball will find its way toward the upper deck, and we have a count of two strikes. On the season, Powell hit 265. Well, Hunter started a little trouble for himself as he walked the leadoff batter, Al Bumbry. And then Rich Coggin drilled a single to center field and Bumbry took third. Davis hit a bouncer to the second baseman. They executed the force of Coggin, but could not complete the double play. Two strike pitch, no. There's a checking throw to first base. That Hunter wants to make certain that Tommy Davis doesn't get too far away. Two strikes to count to Powell. One out of the inning. A 1-1 tie here in game two. Hunter throws, strike over the inside corner of the knee, and Powell is back to the dugout. Good-looking breaking pitch from Catfish Hunter, perfectly thrown right over the inside portion of the knee. Powell made no complaint, none whatsoever, as he went to the dugout. Well, here is Earl Williams. Williams yesterday had two base hits in four trips. One, one of the most significant hits of the ball game was a bases-loaded single in the first inning that saw the Orioles pick up four runs. The Orioles, the run on a hit. The Oakland A's, the run on a hit. Two down now, and Tommy Davis at first base, and the batter is Earl Williams. Williams got into 11 of the 12 games the Orioles and Oakland played uh, together this year and hit uh, 146. Hunter holding the set, the veteran throws. He's right down the groove, and the strike is called. Earl Williams in uh, one of the most talked about trades the Orioles have become involved in in recent years. Came from the Atlanta Braves. Now the one strike offering. Hunter kicks and fires. Swing and a foul out of play. Earl has proved his versatility playing both first base and catching and has surprised a few people with his ability behind the plate. Two strikes to count to Earl Williams. Fish Hunter against Dave McNally here in the uh, second game. Tommy Davis, the runner at first with two down. Two strikes to Williams. And the catfish is ready once more. The A's right-hander kicks and fires. Breaking ball, swing and a miss, and Williams goes down. Second strike out. But at the end of one inning of play, the score. The Orioles won, and Oakland won. Well, as you just heard, Al Bumbley and Rich Coggins did a pretty good job there in the first inning for the Orioles. And one of the Orioles hitters who is out of the lineup with the addition of Coggins and Bumby is Merv Rettman. However, Rettman has some kind words for the men who replaced him. We have a couple left-handed hitters that are hitting around 320 or 330, and uh, I can't expect to play in front of them. Uh, this 
the last couple of years, I think I put right handers better, but this year I've been pursuing just about strictly against the left handers, and as a result, I'm having my trouble right now with right handed pitching. The uh, gentleman that's out there is taking your place in uh, the lineup against the right handers is Al Bumper here. Uh, good shot at the, uh, most, uh, the Rookie of the Year award this year, don't you think? Well, I think that only two ball players in our league deserve the rookie of the year, and they're both in our club. Uh, Rich Coggins is in right field, and Al Bumbrey will be in left field, and they'll be batting one and two. And you can put the coin which one will get it, I think. Merv Rutman of the Baltimore Orioles, and one of the indications why Baltimore is a good ball club, they stay together very well, and they're right now battling for the American League Championship. You know, one of the uh, more frequently used words during a baseball playoff series like this is the word if. So uh, we'll copy that and say, if uh, the Orioles win this American League Championship Series, the World Series against the best of the National League will start here next Saturday. In that uh, connection, World Series tickets will go on sale here at Memorial Stadium Tuesday at 9 o'clock. We'll tell you more about the ticket situation later during our broadcast this afternoon. Okay, Chuck. Well, the uh, season-designated hitter of the uh, Oakland A's, uh, Darren Johnson, uh, stands in now. The right-handed batsman, and McNally curved him high and away, and a ball one as we move to the top of the second inning of a 1-1 tie. Johnson, uh, in yesterday's contest, failed to hit in two official at-bats. He struck out in the first, again in the fourth inning, and then was taken out for a pinch batter. McNally, this time, hits the outside corner knee-high to Darren Johnson. So the count is one ball and one strike. Darren Johnson, the designated hitter, Angel Manguel, the center fielder, Ray Fossey, the catcher, are the do batters here in the top of the second. Swing and a miss at the McNally fastball that was kind of trailing away from uh, Darren. A ball and two strikes. Now, certainly, McNally does not have the fastball that you could compare to a Jim Palmer or by the blue, but he does have a very effective fastball made so by his placement and his other pitches. Outstanding curve and a very good slider. Now the one two pitch. McNally rocks and fires high. Two balls, two strikes. For those of you who just tuning in, Bert Campanaris opened the game for the Oakland A's and hit a solo home run. That accounts for the Oakland run. The Orioles came back with a walk. Cabumbri, a single by Coggins, and an infield bounce out by Davis to tie it up in the bottom of the first. The 2-2 pitch is a check of a swing and a ball three inside. Three balls and two strikes. Johnson started to go and was able to hold back on the swing, did not get the bat out over the plate. So the count is still three and two. McNally had a full count to Sal Bando in the first inning and lost him with a base on ball. Now the 3-2 offering. McNally ready. Here it is. A high foul ball will be out of play behind the plate. Mike Cuellar and Ken Holtzman are the nominees for the third game in this series. That he played tomorrow afternoon in the Oakland County Coliseum. McNally again with a payoff, a 3 2 pitch to Darren Johnson. Strike three called over the inside corner of the knees, and this time it's Johnson who looks back at the plate on fire. And on that McNally strikeout, his second will pause for station identification. This is the Baltimore Oriole Baseball Network. This is the American Forces Radio and Television Service. You're listening to the voice of information for the American Forces at 790 and 1420. Well, here is Angel Manguel to uh, face Dave McNally. He came to the plate four times yesterday against Palmer, struck out twice, fly to center, and went out unassisted to the first baseman. Right-handed batsman, and Manguel hit 224 on the year. McNally's first offering to the right-handed swinger. Breaking ball high inside and the ball won. Angel replaced the center fielder North, who was injured a couple of weeks ago in Minnesota. Turned his ankle in a stepping on first base. And his loss for the playoffs, a very costly loss it is for the open A's. Here's a strike called as the McNally curveball found the range. One ball, one strike to Angel Manguel. North hit in the 280s and led the American League in stolen bases with 53 and is not able to play in the playoffs for Oakland. McNally working the 1-1 offering to Angel Manguel. Swing and a miss at the changeup. The count now is a ball and two strikes. One out and uh, nobody on. We're in the top of the second inning. A tie ball game if you're just tuning our way. Oakland one, Baltimore one. McNally ready to go again. 
Now the left-hander brings the arm down. The one-two to Manguel is a swing and a miss. He tried to stop the swing and couldn't do it. So McNally now has fans three in a row. Two down in the uh, top of the second inning, and the batter will be Ray Fossey. Now Fossey on the year for the Oakland A's at 256, and the games he played against Baltimore this season was a 128 hitter. And yesterday, Fossey went 0 for 2 with a strikeout, and he fly to the left fielder. An outstanding defensive uh, performer for the Oakland A's is Fossey. He came over when uh, Duncan went to the Cleveland Indians. All ready to go. McCallie's first offering to Fossey. High fly ball, center field, fairly deep. Blair is getting back to it now. Near the warning track, Blair squares off on the ball and makes it pass for the final out. The A's are three up, three down. At the end of an inning and a half, the score is Oakland one and Baltimore one. In addition to this American League Championship playoff game number two between Baltimore and Oakland, the Orioles leading the series six to nothing in an opening game win, so they have a one game to nothing advantage. Cincinnati takes the National League playoff series one game to nothing, thanks to a two to one win over New York. Home runs by Steve Rose and Johnny Bench in the eighth, and then in the ninth inning to win it for the Reds. So Cincinnati and Baltimore taking leads in the game two of the baseball playoff series. And pro football activity on Sunday, we have some scores coming in. These are halftime scores. New England 10, Baltimore 3, Cleveland 7, Cincinnati 3, Green Bay and the New York Giants are tied 7-7 seven, seven at the end of the half. Miami is beating the New York Jets at halftime, 24 to nothing. It's Buffalo, 24, Philadelphia, 16 at the half. Also at halftime, Pittsburgh, 38, San Diego, nothing. In the first period, Houston is leading Los Angeles by the score of 3 to nothing. After one quarter, New Orleans, 7, Chicago, nothing. Well, you know, the American League uh, playoff series here and the National League playoff series in Cincinnati, they are the two most important sporting events of the day. But uh, pro football is also going on. So as we have the opportunity during our broadcast today from Memorial Stadium, we'll give you partial and maybe even some final scores on NFL football games. At halftime, New England leads the Baltimore Colts 10-3. At the half, Miami 24, the New York Jets nothing. At the half, Cleveland 7, Cincinnati 3. At halftime, Pittsburgh is running rough out over San Diego. The Steelers 38, San Diego nothing. At the quarter, the 49ers in Atlanta scoreless. At the half, Buffalo leads Philadelphia. Buffalo 24, the Eagles 15. That's a halftime score. All right, Bill, here's Paul Blair, the Orioles center fielder, a right-handed swinger with a swing and a foul ball out of play in a strike one. Paul yesterday. One base hit and four official at that scored two of the Orioles six runs. And the one strike that's coming to Blair is over the outside corner of the knees, and the count quickly now is two strikes. Blair over the year against Oakland Curley hit 186 on the season for the Orioles. He hit 281. The two strike hits to Blair. Little high at the place for high. One ball and two strikes. Other like uh, like most pitchers today, once they get into a little bit of a groove, get into that good groove, have that good rhythm, and they seldom waste any time on the mound. Hunter has been for years one of the most rapid workers in the American League. His next offering is a swing and a miss, and that for that will be his third strikeout. He also is standing now three in a row. Brooks Robinson. Yesterday, Brooks uh, had uh, five plate appearances without a base hit. 256 hitter on the season. He had some of his better days against the Oakland A's, hitting 318. Hunter's first offering a fly ball well hit the cutter. Back goes Manguel, and he's getting through it out of the gift study. He makes the grab. Brooks Robinson is the second out of the inning. And for the play down comes Bob Gritt. And Gritt uh, yesterday, he had a hit in five trips. the season. Bob was a 251 batsman and in games against uh, the Oakland A's and he played in the mall. He hit 178, knocking in five runs and also had a pair of home runs. Hunter fires too high and a ball. One of his two home runs against the Oakland came off uh, the fellow he's facing right now, Jim Jackson Hunter. Hunter's one of his to grip. It's playing in a foul on the screen behind the plate. So we have an even count of one ball, one strike, and Gritch is on his way to the on-deck circle. Water either the car towel, rods and bag, and it turns out that it will be the car towel that he would like to work with. Two down 
and nobody on. The only all found the A's in a one-one deadlock here in game two of the National League Championship Series. Captain Cutter against Dave McNally this afternoon, and here now is Drift back and ready to go. Cutter is always ready to go. Here's his very brief move in the one-one to Drift. A looping foul ball headed toward the mezzanine now. year against the Orioles, won three without a defeat, but he threw, as Joe mentioned earlier, a few long balls on the season and eight against Baltimore. Slider rolling away, and uh, two balls, two strikes. He was missed for 39 home runs in the course of the regular season as captain. The Orioles got to him for eight home runs. He keeps his pitch. Swing and a miss that good-looking third ball from Catfish. Strike out number four. The Orioles are three up, three down at the end of two. Oakland one and Baltimore one. There's been a lot of comment in the National Football League this year that field goals are predominating in play. And today's action on Sunday is an example. Those people might be right. We have nine games that we have scores on. No game at the moment is past the halftime. And in those nine games, there have been a total of 11 field goals kicked. And I think last week in the schedule of National Football Games, there was something like 37 field goals kicked, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that seven of the 13 games played in the National Football League last week were decided by field goals. And I think that Bart Starr, the former Green Bay Packer quarterback, has a rather pertinent point, and this may lead, because Starr's not the only one that believes this, it may lead to a new rule in pro football, notably that the field goal point will be given as to where the ball is hit, either that or the offense will get the ball from the place that the field goal was attempted rather than the 20 if it's missed. The last winning about the World Series tickets going on here at Memorial Stadium Tuesday, providing the choice where the Orioles win the playoffs. The following types of tickets will be available at the stadium box office. $10 upper and lower reserve seats, those are non chairbacks and $6 outfield reserve seat. Cash, certified checks, money orders, may be used for payment. No personal checks can be accepted. Well, here's the right-hand batter to get green, and the county stops him with a ball one high. Green on the year, a 260 hitter, and against the Orioles, hit 116. Yes, sir, just turned to the plate twice without a base hit. Here's a foul ball, going to be in the seat from the first base side, the five miles of ball, and a strike to get green. Those who were in the ballpark yesterday were treated to one of the truly outstanding pitching performances by Baltimore's Jim Tyler. He struck out 12 for the opening. Now the 1-1 one -one offering, a step of a swing and a foul kick. Now the side now of the ball and two strikes. Green did not offer, stopped the swing, and just kicked the ball foul into the middle of Earl Williams. And they shut out Oakland yesterday on five day six. Two offering on the way to green, high and away, and the time now is two balls and two strikes. Only the sixth time all year that the open A's have been shut out, so it's that kind of a ball club. They are an explosive, powerful club. Swing and a miss, and now he gets strikeout, number four. And then it looked like it was that good curveball from Dave. The battle, we got this game number two off to a rousing start for the open eight with a home run. Into the Oreo bullpen out in left field. Captain Harris hit four home runs over the season. And this is a fellow who really likes the spot for the open eight. An outstanding defensive performer and what an exciting, dazzling performer once he gets in the base pass. He sold 34 this year. Hits the Captain Harris strike out, back corner to letters. The Captain Harris kind of takes the bat a little bit. Just uh, kind of give you the think that maybe he could have been working on that, trying to take a rip at it. One strike to count the Captain Harris. He hits with his feet close together, about in the middle of the black box, and he does kind of try to play somewhat. Now the third ball drops into Captain Harris, and he's down 0 and 2. The only other field with a fellow like Captain Harris uh, will be up a couple of steps all of the way around because he just cannot make a mistake on any kind of a ground ball just by Captain Harris. Going outside for a ball. You've got to get to the ball very quickly and make a good, strong, accurate throw. A camp and a like a puppy will turn a routine ground ball into a base hit. 
interference. The Tampa Bay is one out, and nobody on. We're in the open half of the third inning of a one-one tie. McNally is ready. The one two pitch to Tampa Bay. Playing the ground ball slowly here. Third base play. Brooks drops and charges. He's got it. The throw to first. And that's the second out. Tampa hit a slow roller towards Brooks at third. He came up on the grass. Made a throw to high grab and a good throw to get Tampa Bay for the second out of the inning. Two down. And the batter now, Joe Rudy. Rudy hitting 270 on the season and 213 against the Orioles this year. And he just had kind of an off year. He had a few problems, physical problems. And certainly did not measure up to the kind of the year that Rudy is capable of. Last year, a 305 hitter for the Oakland A's. Six, hanging in a foul ball right behind the plate. Mixed up to Earl Williams just a little bit. He seems to have it none the worse for it. Strike one to count to Rudy. We have two down here in the uh, open half of the uh, third inning. Baltimore one, open one. All ready to go. McCauley now has a rocking motion on the left hand. It's to Rudy. A ground ball flashed to the right side of the second base and on through and it's headed to for the base there. Rudy with a sharply hit ground ball to the right side of second base from Jerky Palm Tree to center for tip number two in the game for Oakland. Two outs over the center by Rudy brings in Sal Bando. And Bando against McCauley in the first inning drew the free ticket. He was lost. And then McCauley wild pitched into second base. But then McCauley went to work and got the left hand swinging to Reggie Jackson at a fly ball to center and struck out tennis to end the inning. And got Oakland a one 2 3 order going through the second inning. Got the first two men in the third. The throw to first, back safely. The runner, Joe Rudy. Baseball people all over the land have talked about the similarities between the Orioles and the Oakland A's, and certainly they are much alike. The Sally had each catch that runner at first base and the pitch to Bando high for a ball. They are both outstanding teams defensively. Oakland would certainly have an edge in power hitting. They get about 22 more home runs than have the Orioles this year. The pitching is, for the most part, fairly even. Perhaps a bit of an edge in the bullpen. Some people would have you believe to open. Now the one nothing pitch. McNally ready. Checks on Rudy at first. And the pitch to Bando. Cut in a foul ball right behind the plate. A ball and a strike. And the Orioles would most definitely have an edge in speed. A two exciting ball club. Ball clubs that for the most part do not make too many mistakes. Oakland and the Orioles. Now the one ball, one strike down for the right hand cutting back. The lead is first by Rudy McNally. He flashes a look that way. Holding that look, now comes to the plate. One one band off. Fly ball really ripped. Beats the left field. Bumbling back at the front. Still backing. Right at the wall. Leap. Stadium in Baltimore. All ready to go to the uh, Oriole half of 
the third inning, and this is a capacity, a very near capacity crowd still buzzing. A step clean ground ball off the bat of Belanger, right at the second base from Green, the third of first, and a one pitch. Belanger is gone. And now some kind of an ovation will build for the Baltimore Oreo rookie who just went soaring above the left field wall to take a home run away from Bamboo. Listen to this ovation for Bumbley.
nobody on. Here comes with Gene Kenneth. He left it in the county third strike in the first inning. And the Orioles say this fellow is a dead throw with him. Both the infield and the outfield. The pitch coming down is a strike over the inside corner. Run high. The Kenneth. Player is cut well around into the alley. And uh, deep left center. Deep straight away from me. The infield is cut to the third base side. The line to the short shot. Cut around third in the hole. Rich is well around toward the bag of second. But now he's one strike six. Playing a foul ball. Bounced up a hit screen in the back. Oh, the the top of the Okanay first place in June 7th. He had one for four yesterday. And the Oh, ready to go. And the area left side of two shots after the center. Powell, a perfect pitch to him to get him looking in the first inning. 
It was a breaking ball. It was over the inner portion of the plate, right down around the knees. If you can keep throwing the right there all afternoon, your chances of getting Kyle and most other hitters out are pretty good. There's a high fly out of the shallow left field, back to shortstop third base and on the left field of the shortstop Campanero. It's there, and he's got it, and Powell on one hit. That's to the shortstop Campanero. Two down here in the Orioles half of the fourth inning of a 1-1 tie, and now Earl Williams will get his chance for the capture. Plenty now, it's still quite an imposing swing. since he uh, got the fourth on Davis back in the first inning, and if you include that fourth, it should be 11 in a row. Since Todd and Pringle. <laughs> Here is Williams. He struck out against Hunter in the first inning. Ball on a time outside of a big, strong-looking Oriole catcher, Earl Williams. He's got a home run from first Campanero to start the ball game. Breaking ball, low and outside, 2-0 now to Earl. The Orioles matched it with a single run on the bottom of the first inning, and it's been that way ever since. A game that has marked some pretty tough pitching from Cassidy Center and McNally so far, and some brilliant defensive play by Baltimore left fielder Al Bumby. The 2-0 pitch to Williams. Five top offers from the middle of the infield. Campanero to shortstop caught in court. And he's still on the skin of the infield waiting, going towards second. Campanaris has got it. The Orioles are three up and three down. At the end of four complete, Oakland one, Baltimore one. Okay, let's take a look at some of the major college football scores across the country by section. It'll take us about uh, three half innings to do it for you without getting in. Okay, in the east, Bucknell 45, ready for seven. Boston College 44, Navy 7. Coast Guard 20, Norwich 12. Columbia 14, Princeton 13. Connecticut 7, New Hampshire 3. It was Delaware 56, Baldwin Wallace 18, Fordham 18, Stephen Hall 17, Holy Cross 10, Dartmouth nothing, Indiana over West Virginia 28 to 14, Juniata 27, Georgetown of D.C. nothing, Lafayette 28, C.W. Post 12, Maine 20, Rhode Island 7, Massachusetts 25, Rutgers 22, Pennsylvania 28, Brown 20, Tampa 21, Akron 7, Temple 16, Cincinnati 15, it was Trinity of Connecticut, 22, base 15. Tulane, 24, Pittsburgh, 6. In the south, Alabama, 28, Georgia, 14. Auburn, 14, Mississippi, 7. We'll check more scores in the south a little later. Well, we have uh, finished four ends of game two of the American League Championship Series game today. And before the eighth now come to bat against McNally in the top of the fifth inning. Let's pause right now for station identification. This is the Orioles Baseball Network. This is the American Forces Radio and Television Service. This is the Southern Command Radio Network, an affiliate of the American Forces Radio and Television Service. Oh, we're ready to go to the top of the fifth inning. It'll be uh, Catcher Fossey to lead off for the A's, and then it'll be Dick Green and uh, shortstop Burt Campanero. Fossey in his first uh, plate appearance against McNally was gone on a fly ball of the center fielder. McNally has dropped two decisions this year to uh, his opponent of the afternoon, Jim Catfish Hunter, both by the same scores. He lost to four to three the first time they got together, the 29th of April. Here's a strike call over the inside corner, knee high to Fossey. And the next time they went head and head was uh, here in Baltimore, the 9th of May, and Hunter beat McNally that time by a score of four to three, only in ten innings. McNally's one strike pitch to uh, Ray Fossey. The left hander fires high foul, makes the seat first base side. So he's got two strikes. Hunter then beat Jim Palmer by a score of uh, seven to five on the first game of a doubleheader here in Baltimore on the sixth of July, and that accounts for the 103 win. McNally's lone victory over the Oakland A's this year was the second game of that doubleheader when he defeated Vita Blue by a count of five to three. Two strikes to count to Fossey pitch. Just inside. We'll get a count of the ball and two strikes. Bossy Green, Campanaris. Now the sun really beaming down in Baltimore. As you know, if you have followed the fortunes of Baltimore baseball, that their luck weather-wise has not always been the best in playoff and World Series competition. A ball and two strikes. Hold on. Time is called right now. Requested, I guess, by Bossy, who backs out. So McNally breaks contact with the rubber and we'll wait just a split second or two. Now they're both ready, and here we go again. The count of the ball and two strikes as McNally throws. That's outside. Two balls, two strikes. 
And in fact, uh, someone once quipped about Baltimore's postseason baseball weather that Baltimore sometimes appears to be the stall shower of the American League. We have certainly had some weather problems. Not this year. The weather has been just perfect. Two two sets coming down. Here's a ground ball hit toward the shortstop, Melanza. He's got it. The throw on to first. And we've got one gone. That now will be green. Nick in the uh, third inning against McCallie in his lone trip to the plate was a strikeout victim. has a sign. Here's the uh, motion and the first offering to Green is a breaking ball over and the strike is called as McCallie covered the inner portion of the plate down around the knees to pick Green. Infield plays Green just about straight up and the center fielder Blair is a little bit toward the alley in left center. Coggins holds his own out there in right field. Pitch coming a fly ball foul to the seat from the upper deck. In other words, uh, Green can and will take the ball that way given the opportunity. Uh, as we mentioned a couple of times uh, this afternoon, uh, yesterday the Orioles and Oakland played before a banner turnout of 41,279, and they're going to top that this afternoon by quite a few. Two strike pitch to Green. McNally is ready. He throws. Change up high. Count of one and two. ball two strikes to the Oakland uh, second baseman Dick Green McNally ready once more down comes the arm of the pitch it's a high fly center field and Blair is tracking it coming up on the ball down the Oriole classy center fielder is waiting it's in his glove and that's the second out of the inning two down in the top of the fifth inning and now here is Campanaris Campanaris uh, yesterday one for three he walked once singled fly to center grounded to third and open the ball game by hitting McNally's second pitch into the Oriole bullpen in left field. He will count for the lone Oakland run. The Orioles matched it with a run of their own in the bottom of the first inning, and that's the way we are now in the top of the fifth. McNally's ready to go. Here's the first one to Campanaris. He ran the hands up the bat as if he had an idea of a bunt and took it high for a ball. When Campanaris steps to the plate, the Oriole infield comes up a couple of steps all of the way around. Brooks Robinson at third is just a step off the grass. One nothing pitch to Campanaris fouled out of play, so we've got a count of the ball and a strike. McNally undefeated in the American League Championship Series play. You can say that of the Orioles. They have had outstanding success in these postseason classics. Now the one-one offering. McNally throws 1-1 to Campanaris, fly ball, well hit to right field. Coggins is going back near the warning track. Coggins is there, he's got it for the final out. The Oakland A's are three up and three down. At the end of four and one half innings of game two, the score, Baltimore one, Oakland one. Continuing with scores from the south in college football, East Carolina 45, Davidson nothing, Florida A&M 27, Alabama State nothing. Georgia Tech 14, Army 10, it was Kentucky, 42, Mississippi State, 14. Louisville, 24, Wichita State, 10. LSU, 24, Florida, 3. Morgan State, 24, Maryland Eastern Shore, 21. Richmond, 20, Furman, 17. South Carolina, 27, Virginia Tech, 24. It was Tampa, 21, Akron, 7. Southern Miss, 42, University of Tennessee at Chattanooga, 7. Tennessee State, 19, Grambling, 13. Texas A&M, 30, Clemson, 15. Tuskegee, 48, Alabama A&M, 19. Vanderbilt over Virginia, 39 to 22. VMI, 23, Citadel, 6. William and Mary, 33, Villanova, 21. And it was Western Kentucky, 45, West Carolina, 7. We'll check scores in the Midwest a little later. Well, the last half of the fifth inning coming along in Baltimore with the Oakland A's and the Orioles in a 1-1 deadlock in game two of the American League Championship Series. Paul Blair will be the leadoff batter for the Orioles in the last half of the fifth inning. And at this point, it's our pleasure to turn this microphone over now to Bill O'Donnell. Bill? Thank you.
Thank you, Chuck, and hello again, everybody. The birds in the fifth inning, and here's Blair. And Paul is thrown way outside by the catfish. Since giving up the tie run to the Orioles in the first inning, the catfish has been real smooth. The Orioles haven't had a base runner on since the opening inning. On the one and all, it's low outside, and it's two and zero to Blair. Blair began the Orioles' second inning. He's starting the bottom of the fifth. Against the open right-hander, Blair fanned on a breaking ball in the second inning. Catfish is 2-0. Pitch, foul, right back, and it's two balls and one strike. In addition to being real rough the last two, three innings, another thing about the Catfish, he has delivered very, very few pitches. On his 2-1 deal to the waiting, Blair, a bunt, out to its third. Sander plays it on one hop, throws to first. And staying at the bag to make the put out is Tennis. Tennis had a reach up, almost stumbled off the bag, but stayed right with it. So Blair laid it down, but popped it up, and then one bounce to Bando, and Bando made the play. Brooks Robinson up for his uh, second time today, guide to center in the second inning. He is looking for his first playoff hit. Talking about the Hunter using very few pitches. He got rid of the birds last inning with five pitches. The inning before used only four. He's got a strike called letter high. Catfish and uh, Dave McNally, although they throw from different sides, very much alike. Neither one is overpowering. They spot their pitches. Here's a high fly, shallow right. Jackson breaking towards the foul line. He's in fair territory. He one-hands it inside that strike. And Brooks Robinson is the second out. Talking about uh, McNally and the Catfish Hunter having similar styles. They try to move the ball around on here, one corner to the other, move the ball up and down, in and out. Neither one has an overpowering fastball. They both have outstanding breaking pitches and can throw them even soft or hard. Bobby Gritch is coming up now. He was fanned on a breaking ball in the second inning. Two gone here in the bottom of the fifth. We got a tie game. Here's a breaker high to Bobby in ball one. Catfish Hunter has now retired 14 straight. Two out, nobody on. Lower end of the fifth inning. And now the 1-0 by Hunter. A jammer is inside. Grit started to go. He had the finger on the trigger and then laid off that pitch. So it's two balls and no sight. Only had two runs scored in the game. A run for each. Only four hits in the game. Three by the A's and one. Coggins for the Orioles in the opening inning. 2-0 to Grit. It's high. Three balls and no sight. Orioles have had two base runners. Sunbury with a walk in the first, and then Coggins with a base hit. Sunbury walked on four pitches. Grish is in a 3-0 position against Hunter, and there's ball four. So like Sunbury, he goes to first base on four pitches. That breaks the string. 14 went down in a row since the first inning. Now here's Belanger. Mark tried to check his swing and in so doing sent an easy roller to the second baseman and uh, Green threw him out in the third. First baseman Tennis goes anchoring the first base and Gritch will lead off. Just as they did yesterday when uh, open side of blue was on the scene plus the relievers, the outfield is very shallow to Belanger. A strike, one is called, it cuts the middle of the plate. Reggie Jackson is extremely shallow, more shallow than anybody we have ever seen play to Belanger, at least in right field. Grit steps off his lead. He doesn't get too much real estate away from the hole to tennis. Hunter sets to the belt. Now his 0-1. Ground ball past the mound. Back in second base by Campanaris. Grit is going to try to go to third. Manguel throwing to third base. In safely is Grit on the throw to third. Belanger goes to second. A roller by the mound. It looked like Campanaris might have a shot at it back in second base, but it eluded his glove side. Went to shallow center. Grit kept turning it on. Picked him up and laid him down. Went to third base sliding. And Manguel saw to third baseman Bando was late. On the late throw, Belanger also escaped to second. It's a single with Belanger advancing on the throw. Two are on. Two are out. And the batter is Al Bundry. Not only has Bunbury scored the only Oriole run, but he has made the defensive play of the day. Taking away a third inning home run attempt wallop off the bat of Sal Bando with a fantastic leaping catch at the left field fence. 
two on and two out. A tie game, 1-1. One, one. A low deal to Bumbley, and that's the ball. There's activity for the first time now in the open pen. Left-hander Knowles, that's Darrell Knowles. Right-hander Fingers, Raleigh Fingers. Gritch and Belanger, and they both can fly. They're leading at third and second on the 1-0. and oh. A swing and a miss. Bumbley went down for a fifth. It's one ball and one strike. When Bunbury came to the plate in the bottom of the third inning, after making a fabulous leaping catch in the top of the third against Sandell, he received just a standing ovation from this ballpark. Hunters 1-1 to Bunbury. It's high. Two balls and a strike. And this is going to bring out Dick Williams for the first time today. Until the fifth inning, Catfish Hunter, even though he gave up that first inning run, he was completely in charge. He was having smooth sailing, using very few pitches, and that's a, a big plus early in the game when you use very few throws. But now he's lost, at least for the moment, a little something here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Dick Williams went to the mound along with his catcher Fossey and the third baseman Bando, and now Dick Williams has gone back. It is ball two, and strike one to Bumbrey, who's walked and scored and flied out. Very tight, inside third is Bando. Rich is leading right beside him, the two and one. Swing and a miss. He got caught cutting at a tight slider to the inside corner and down. Two balls, two strikes, two out, two men on. A 1-1 thriller right now. Although there are two strikes on Bunbury, Bando has not moved. He is still up to the grass, well inside third. Hunter is going full lined up, kicks and deals. Foul to the left field side. Still two and two. Now the outfield of the A's is really spread. There's a bigger gap for Bumbry to the alley in left center than to right center. Rudy is playing over into left field, playing Bumbry strictly as an opposite field swinger. Jackson, the right fielder, is not deep at all. He's playing in straightaway right field. But again, we repeat, not deep. Another 2-2 two -two pitch coming with two on. Hunter to Bumbry. Swing and a miss, he strikes it out on a low breaking ball. At the end of five, Baltimore one and Oakland one. College football scores from the Midwest, Arizona 23, Iowa 20, Bowling Green 49, Toledo 35, Butler 13, Wabash 7, it was Colorado 23, Iowa State 16, Dayton 23, Southern Illinois 19, Kansas State 21, Memphis State 16, Kent State 39, Western Michigan 15, Miami of Ohio, 31, Marshall, 6, Michigan, 24, Oregon, nothing. Montana, 31, South Dakota, 19, Nebraska blasted Minnesota, 48 to 7. North Dakota, 43, Morningside, 7, Notre Dame, 14, Michigan State, 10. Ohio State, 27, Washington State, 3, Ohio University, 14, Northwestern, 12. Purdue, 27, Duke, 7, Stanford, 24, Illinois, nothing. Wayne State, 13, Shadron, 7, Wisconsin, 37, Wyoming, 28. So that was a look at scores in college football Saturday in the Midwest. We'll take a look at the Southwest and West a little later. Now a little bit of the byplay here at the Memorial Stadium. They have redressed the infield, and uh, the broom girl, the Linda Wareheim, is waiting for Coach Herb Mullen. And as he delayed uh, getting down to third base, uh, Linda faked him just a little bit. First as if she were going to intrude dust off the shoes, and then took the broom and just covered him with dirt. Well, uh, back to the ball game with a 1-1 score going to the top of the sixth inning and back again to Bill. All right, Chuck, in the open sixth inning, the two, three, four men against McNally, and that means Rudy, Sando, and Jackson. This, of course, is the danger part of the Oakland order, and then after Jackson, also uh, Gene Tennis and Johnson, who can also go long ball. Rudy, in this game, is slide to right and single to center. Dave McNally starting work now on the top of the sixth inning in a 1-1 standoff. He's got the outside corner in strike one. That's been McNally's game like it's been the Catfish's game. Nibble on the corners, inside and outside. Move them in, move them out, move them down, move them up. Rudy, a real good judge of pitches, and he proved that yesterday against Palmer, picking up a pair of walks, although he went hitless. On the 0-1. Ground foul, spiked by third base coach Norton. Another example of what McNally's been doing. The first pitch to the outside corner and down. 
the second pitch came ripping into the hands tight to Rudy in his swinging foul. So it's strike two. Sandel is kneeling on deck. Also off stage, waiting back in the dugout is Reggie Jackson. Two right-handed cutters and then a left-handed swinger against McNally here in the sixth inning. Both clubs scored their runs in the opening inning. McNally, fine. And now he kicks and deals. Outside, he wasted that to Rudy and tried to make him chase. Rudy had uh, a fine year in the championship season for the A's last year, and he's had another good season this year. Rudy from the deep part of the box and closing his stance just a bit. McNally starts rocking as he winds to the first base side. Then he comes one and two. He's outside and high again. Williams is handling McNally. At third base, Brooks Robinson teaming up on the left side with Belanger. On the right side, Rich and Powell, second and first. The outfield is Bumbry, Blair, and Coggins. The deep man is Bumbry out in left field. Rudy has slowed down McNally. He just moved uh, one foot away, and now he starts to dig back in. 2-2 two -two is on the way. Fly ball, well hit, right field. Coggins is going back to the fence. He's looking up. He leaps at the fence, and he can't get it. It is over the right field fence for an opposite field Rudy home run. Rudy just took McNally the opposite way to break the tie, and Oakland has gone ahead 2-1. Campanaris started the game with a home run to left. Rudy breaks the tie with an opposite field home run here in the sixth inning. There is a, a wind in the ballpark. Not strong, but the wind is blowing out towards right field. Here's Sal Bando. He has walked and skied to left. He hits a ground foul by the moving third base coach, Norrin. It was Bando's drive that Bumbry leaped for and took away a home run bid from Bumbry, from uh, Bando in the third. Oakland two and the Orioles one in the visiting end of the sixth inning. The strike one pitch to the right-hand batting. Bando fouled off to the right of home plate and it's strike two. McNally had the leadoff fellow, Rudy, down two strikes, then worked him two and two, and then Rudy lost the McNally pitch for the four-bagger. McNally has come back the same way to Bando, at least right now, 0-2. McNally rocking, and now he kicks and he deals. Outside, one ball and two strikes. The homer by Rudy, the fourth hit by the A's off McNally. In addition to the Camp and Harris home run, hit by Rudy before and also Johnson in the fourth. Bando to McNally's 1-2. It's a fly ball, deep left again. Bumbray can't get this one. It's in the left field seat for another home run. Back-to-back solo -back homers by Rudy and Bando start Oakland sixth inning. All Oakland runs on solo homers. 3-1 to one now the score, and the Oriole bullpen is busy with the bullet. Bob Reynolds is warning. He'll get some extra time because Bamberger, the pitching coach, is walking to the mound. Bando had a home run taken away by Bumbry in the third, but there was no chance for anybody to take away this slab. Very well hit in the left field bleacher section. Sandy is not staying around the mound too long. He has chatted with McNally, as well as with Williams. And now McNally will take on another power guy, Reggie Jackson. In this game, Jackson has skied to center and fanned. He went down swinging on a curve ball away from him in the fourth inning. Nobody out in the top of the sixth inning. What was a 1-1 game is now a 3-1 Oakland to lead. Swing and a miss, a low breaker. As a matter of fact, after Jackson completed his swing, he had a bounce down off one knee. Jackson led the American League in homers, 32 of them. The strike one pitch to Jackson. Side armor, swept outside. One ball, one strike. Reynolds still warning. He started to warm right after Bando whacked the home run.
Jackson trying to relax to uh, clear the batter's box. This has been in years gone by one of his biggest problems, learning to relax. 1-1. One, one. Swings and doesn't get it. He tried to check a swing and not in time. It's one ball and two strikes. A very, very intense competitor. Even more intense than several years ago. Jackson doing a couple of things, trying to think things over, trying to figure out McNally, and also deciding, well, McNally's got me in trouble, so I'm going to slow McNally down. Now McNally and Jackson both ready for the 1-2 offering. He swings and strikes out. It might have been out of the strike zone. Williams dropped the ball. Jackson didn't run the first base. He was walking to the dugout. Williams chased him and tagged him out on the back. Now give McNally his seventh strikeout. The second time he's gotten Jackson on a breaking ball. One away, and here's Gene Tennis. The open first baseman has been out twice on strike. Looking in the first inning, swinging on a low fastball in the fourth inning. He's a right-hand batter, didn't feel comfortable. He knew McNally was going to go after him, so he requested and got time from plate umpire Bill Haller. Two runs home, one out here in the sixth inning. The base is empty. High Papa back at second base. Rich retreating. Blair charging in. It's Rich with a call and Bobby with the out. Tennis skies are popping out to Rich back in shallow center. Two out now. Here is Darren Johnson. Although Johnson had a base hit in the fourth inning, and he hammered a hard liner for a base hit to left, McNally in Johnson's two plate appearances has been making the designated hitter chase bad pitches. Two out, bases empty. He hits a high fly into left center. Playable by either Bumbery or Blair. It's Bumbery's call. And Al's catch, and that's the final out. But Rudy and Bando have homered here in the sixth inning. So at the end of five and one half, Oakland three, Baltimore one. Finishing up with college football scores from Saturday in the Southwest, Abilene Christian 67, Stephen F. Austin 50. Arizona State 67, New Mexico 24, Arkansas 13, TCU 5, Baylor 21, Florida State 14, Missouri 17, SMU 7, New Mexico State 27, Texas El Paso 3, Oklahoma 24, Miami of Florida 20, Texas 41, Wake Forest nothing, Texas Arlington 26, McNeese State 24, Texas Tech 20, Oklahoma State 7, Tulsa 44, Drake 7, Xavier of Ohio 17, Southwestern Louisiana 14, West Texas State 13, Lamar nothing. In the West, Westminster of Utah 16, Colorado Mines 10, Western Washington State 19, Oregon College 14, Utah State 13, BYU 7, UCLA 66, Utah 16, it was Southern California 21, Oregon State 7. We'll take a look at the rest of the West a little later. Well, the Oakland A's uh, on top of the Orioles now by a count of three to one as the birds bat on the last half of the sixth inning. A reminder that tomorrow afternoon, air time from Oakland will be 325. 325 will be on the air from Oakland to California in game three. They will match Mike Cuellar, 18 and 13, against Ken Holtzman, the Oakland left-hander who has won 21 and lost 13. Holtzman against Cuellar tomorrow afternoon from Oakland, game three. And air time again will be 325. Yeah. All right, Chuck back in the opening inning, and the Orioles were down by a run, tied it up. Now here in the bottom of the sixth inning, they're down to Catfish Hunter and the A's, but this time by two runs. Coggins, Davis, and Powell in the Orioles' sixth inning. Coggins takes a Hunter pitch outside, and ball one. Third baseman Bando against both Bunbury and Coggins in this game has been well up on the infield grass and well inside third. 1-0 to Coggins. It's a strike at his knees. One ball, one strike. Coggins has one of the two hits off Hunter, a single to center field in the first inning. He lined a hard one hopper that Green played the second baseman in the third. A change up, lined to center field. It'll be a base hit. Coggins on a two for three game. He lined it right by the second baseman Green between Green and the bag. So that'll bring up now Tommy Davis. Davis three hits yesterday. 0 for 2 in this game, but a run batted in. With Coggins and Bunbury aboard in the first inning and nobody out, he's got a ground ball at second base and green. The ground had turned into a force play, but enabled Bunbury to score from third base. Right now, Davis is trying to move along Coggins here in the sixth inning. At 
activity again in the open pen with Dal Knowles and Raleigh Singer. Singer throws right, Knowles throws left. Coggins, pretty good lead. Let's see if Hunter goes after it. He throws to the plate. A strike is at the knees of Tommy Davis. Davis has just taken a quick land over a third base coach, Billy Hunter. Started to dig in and then decided to look back again. And now as he thought Hunter was going to go after him, he stepped out of the box and played umpire Haller, was forced to call time. Sando at third, backing up about two steps behind the bag and well off the line. Hunter sets and works. In the dirt, Foxy does a good job scooping it out. Since the ball hit the dirt, Tommy Davis has requested plate umpire Haller check the ball. Haller did and has thrown the ball out of play. One ball, one strike to Davis. A runner on. That's Coggins, who just singled. Nobody out. Hayes are leading three to one. We're waiting the ball one, strike one pitch to Tommy Davis. He's got to wait, and we do too, because Hunter goes after Coggins' lead. The one one Davis. Breaking ball comes high. Two balls and one strike. The center fielder, Manguel, and the right fielder, Jackson, strictly play Davis to go to the opposite power alley and to right field directly. Jackson, well over to right field, but not deep. Manguel, well to right center, and not deep either. Straightaway depth, shading left center is Rudy. Coggins lead, and Hunter works two and one. Ground ball, wide at third base, base hit to left field by Rudy. Coggins stops the second base. A hard ground smash, Sandro gave it a diving bit to his left side and could not reach it. So two are on. Nobody is out, and we'll pause for station identification. This is the Orioles Baseball Network. This is the American Forces Radio and Television Service. Well, the Orioles had only two hits off Hunter coming into the sixth inning. They picked up back-to-back -back singles by Coggins and Davis. Dick Williams made a visit to Catfish Hunter last inning, and he's making a visit now again here in the sixth inning. Again, repeating, Williams and the A's have left-hander Knowles and right-hander Fingers going at it in their bullpen. It's a four-way session at the mound. Third baseman Bando, catcher Fossey, pitcher Hunter, and the skipper. At any moment, Bill Haller will break to the mound and get Williams out of there. Haller is still letting Williams talk and hasn't gone there yet. Now Haller is making his move, and just as he does, Dick Williams and Bando leave the mound. And now Fossey will come back to the plate. Okay, what about Powell? He has looked at a third strike, and he has popped up. He was part of a string that the Hunter really ran off from the first into the fifth inning. Hunter retired at one stage, 14 in a row. He weakened last inning, but escaped double. He has weakened here again in the sixth. Two on, nobody out. Hunter to Powell. Swing and a miss. Powell was nowhere near that breaking ball. And he was lunging in his throat. First baseman tennis, deep behind Tommy Davis. Now we've uh, talked frequently about some unusual defense by the Oakland club in this series. What is unusual right now is that Jackson, the right fielder, is not deep. Not deep at all to Bruce Powell. 0-1. A ground ball. Back of first base. Played by Tennis. Goes to first with a foot toss to Hunter for the out. Powell is out, but the two runners advance. You can put Coggins at third and have Davis at second now and bring up Earl Williams with first base open. Powell bounced out. Tennis behind the bag to the covering Hunter at the, at the bag for the out. Another session going on. This jab session between Bando and the Catfish. Williams struck out on a Hunter curve in the first inning. Popped up on a 2-0 pitch in the fourth inning. The A's three, the Orioles one. Coggins at third, Davis at second, only one out. The on-deck man is Blair. 
Right now, everybody's centering their attention on Catfish Hunter and Earl Williams. Williams had two hits yesterday. One of them drove in two big runs. All right, here we go. Catfish Hunter to Earl Williams. And the pitch is on the way. A high fly into shallow center. Campanaris racing back. Manguel coming in. And it's the off their goal. They collide. It's a base hit and the run is scored. Campanaris had the play made. He had the play made and Manguel knocked it away from him. Manguel collided with Campanaris and knocked it out of Campy's glove. What was a routine out turns into a run scoring and Williams goes all the way to second base. Morgan scores while Davis goes to third. Campanaris had the play completely made. As he reached up and the ball went to the glove, Manguel knocked it right out. Now we're awaiting the scoring on the play. It is a two-base hit. Two-base hit and a run batted in. Now, Campanaris has requested uh, a little bit of attention from uh, Romo, the Oakland trainer. It looks to us up here in the booth, and we might be able to check it on the replay. It looks to us as if Campanaris had the play completely made in shallow center. He was under the high Williams pop-up. Manguel rushing in from center field, knocked Campanaris off balance, knocked him down, and the ball was jarred loose out of the glove. What should have been, and this is what Oakland is thinking right now, what should have been, Bill Coggins at third and Davis at first and two out is instead a run home to make it three to two, only one out, and still two runners on. The batter is Paul Blair. The tie run, Tommy Davis at third. The right side of the infield very tight. Outside and ball one to Blair. Campanaris, the shortstop, playing halfway. Rue Abando, the third baseman, right back of the grass on the 1-0 to Blair. He swings and it's strike one. One ball, one strike. Davis, 90 feet away at third. Williams in the middle of the infield at second. Blair batting with one out in a 3-2 game, and the A's lead now is down to one run. 1-1 one, one to Blair. It's a foul to the upper deck and out of play. One ball and two strikes. You can feel, perhaps, Blair just pressing a bit in the batter's box, knowing that Blair would like to get at least Davis home from third base and tie it up. Hunter has hit the rubber again, has gazed into Fossey's side. His wind-up and the one-two to Blair is a high pop-up. Shortstop Campanaris is on the infield and Campanaris for the out. When Campanaris went back for the pop-up, he didn't just wave his arms once, he waved them very severely and strongly and waved everybody off and made sure nobody was near him. So Blair popped up, two gone, and Brooks Robinson the batter. Another session now at the mound. Bando involved and also Fosse involved with Hunter. Of course, uh, Williams can't come out. If he came out, Hunter would have to leave. Rich is on deck. First base is open. Both Bando and Hunter, when they were meeting, were talking and looking directly at Dick Williams, and they will walk Brooks Robinson intentionally. Here's ball one. This now gives the A's, if it happens, to play at any base on a ground ball. And ball two wide. As soon as they walk Brooks Robinson, it will be Brooks at first, Williams at second, plus Davis at third, and there is ball three. This will be the third free ticket given up by Catfish in this game. Three and off, and there's the fourth wide one. Batter is Bobby Gritch. He is hitless today. He is hitless in the series. A 
another mound meeting. Bandel, Fosse, and Hunter again. And Billy Hunter decides, well, let's have our meeting. Billy is going to uh, go right to second base and tell Earl Williams something. Maybe what Billy has said to Williams, look, just in case there's a base hit to the outfield, when you come towards third, make sure you look at me. Well, we'll find out. Bobby Gritch in this game is stand and walk. He went 0 for 5 yesterday against the open pitching. Tommy Davis at third. Earl Williams at second. Brooks Robinson at first. Two out in the bottom of the sixth inning. The wind up on the pitch to Gritch is bout foul to the Orioles dugout. Coggins, Davis, and Williams have the hits in this inning. Hunter moving the ball between his pitching hand and the glove. Now keeps it right in the pitching hand. The right hander around and in, 0 and 1. Looping fly ball into right field. Should be playable by Jackson. He pounds the glove and makes the put out. And that's it in the bottom of the sixth inning, but the Orioles do get a run. One run with three hits, and they leave the bases jammed. At the end of six, Oakland three, and Baltimore two. Well, let's wrap up the scores of college football. We were at the western section of the United States. Houston 14, San Diego State 9, Montana 31, South Dakota 19. It was Montana State 43, Idaho State 21, Pacific 21, San Jose State 21, Penn State 19, Air Force 9, San Francisco State 48, Oregon Tech 9. Head coach Jim Owens of the University of Washington did something last week that is very unusual for a head football coach. He replied publicly in a newspaper to an editorial which said that the University of Washington Huskies played a very boring type of a football game that they didn't score very much and generally speaking uh, we're a very boring football team so Owens replied on Thursday to this that appeared in last week's paper on Saturday Washington played California the final score California 54 Washington 49 it was the highest scoring game in Pacific 8 conference football history okay let's get back to the action now at Memorial Stadium in Baltimore and here again is Chuck Thompson have picked up another run and a mistake, a collision between center fielder Angel Manguel, who will lead off this uh, side of the seventh, and shortstop Campanaris gave the Orioles their second run. Watching Campanaris, it appeared that he came out of the collision all okay, but he was flexing his left arm, left shoulder considerably, and also seemed to uh, display a little discomfort in the left leg, in the left knee. Now, whether that will uh, show up again tomorrow in Oakland remains to be seen. Back to the ball game, and here's Phil. All right, Chuck, in the seventh inning, here's Angel Manguel. He swings, hits the ground ball towards the hole, it's short. Belanger gets over. His long throw, just in time to Powell. Manguel hit a hard hopper into the hole on the left side of the infield. Belanger went to his right side, cut it off in the hole, and made a long on-target toss in time to Powell. Manguel gone to begin the seventh inning. Here's Ray Fossey now, the catcher. Fossey has fly to center and rolled to short. Fosse will close his stance just a bit, and he'll really spread the feet from the rear of the box. Right hand batting Fosse to McNally. Strike with a fastball. Cut the outside corner and strike one. Fosse is eighth in the Oakland order, and it'll be Dick Green next here in the top of the seventh. The A's batting, and they're leading. Here's a ground ball wide at third base. Belanger plays the slow hopper, hurries the throw. It's in time again. Belanger has done the job on two different kinds of ground balls. Manguel was hit hard to the hole. Belanger ranged over quickly and whipped his throw in time. He had a weight on this slow hopper. Once again, he had to hurry his throw. So he's gotten Manguel. He's gotten Fosse. And now the batter will be Dick Green. Speaking of Belanger, who's just made two pretty nifty back-to-back -back plays on different kind of ground balls, he had very, very few chances in yesterday's game. McNally having a kind of a, a different complexion to, to what's going on here in the last couple of innings to what happened in the earlier innings. He was striking out quite a number of Oakland batters in the first, say, four innings. 
Now his infielders and his outfielders are doing more of the work in the later going. Green is 0 for 2. He hits the ground ball by the mound. The Belanger again near second. Mark to Powell. There's the third out. Belanger did everything and so did Powell. Going to the bottom of the seventh inning. It's Oakland 3 and Baltimore 2. A couple of final scores in pro football. You know, we were talking to you earlier about field goals and the fact that uh, when we were talking to you a while back that there had been 11 field goals kicked in the nine games that we had reported to you to that time and mentioned also that there's been a lot of outcry about field goals. If the field goal kicker comes in, everybody's been battling on the field. They're tired and sore and uh, pretty well beaten up, generally speaking. So you get a fresh guy comes in a ball game and kicks a field goal and does it. Well, it happened with the Green Bay Packers and the New York Giants where Chester Markle, with one second remaining, blasted away from 32 yards out, and the Green Bay Packers, in the final second of the game, beat the New York Giants 16-14. to One other final score, which wasn't uh, quite as close, not nearly so, the Miami Dolphins 31, the New York Jets 3. Some third period scores, New England 17, Baltimore 6, Cleveland 14, Cincinnati 3, and uh, also at the third period mark, Pittsburgh 38, San Diego nothing. Well, a fellow who uh, just about did it all with some uh, outstanding assistance from uh, Oriel left-hander Dave McNally, Mark Belanger, who retired Manguel, Fosse, and Green on ground ball for the shortstop. That's the fellow who's going to see if he can start something for Baltimore in the bottom of the seventh inning. Okay, Phil. Belanger has uh, Chuck come up twice today. He's bounced out in singles. He had a base hit up the middle with a ground ball in the fifth inning. So Belanger starts the Orioles seventh, Baltimore down by a run. Here's a high pop-up towards third baseman Bando and shortstop Campanaris. It's Campanaris just inside the third base foul line for the out. Belanger on one pitch is gone in the home seventh. Now Al Bumbria will get another fine greeting. He had one on the third after he took away the Bando home run did, and he gets another one here in the seventh. Bumbria has been a base runner with a walk on four pitches in the first inning and later scored what was then a tie run. He's batting now on the seventh with his club down by a run and looks at a strike. The pattern from Hunter all day to Bunbury has been to keep pitchers down and to throw on tight breaking balls. He's outside, one ball, one strike. Activity going on as the Oakland 10 stays hot. The left-hander Knowles with the right-hander fingers. 1-1 one, one pitch. High fly ball into left center. Rudy broke in, and now he breaks back. Rudy is there, and he's got it. Two gone in the seventh inning. Rich Coggins, uh, part of the Orioles' 1-2 left-hand batting leadoff punch now to the plate. Coggins, two hits, and he scored a run in the sixth inning. Singled in the first inning. And singled again in the sixth, and also got the run over when uh, Williams' pop up went to Campanaris, and he collided with center fielder Manguel. The ball came out of Campanaris' glove, and while that happened, that enabled Coggins to score. Bando, just as he did with Bunbury, is well inside the bag, close to the foul line of the grass. Low and outside, and ball one to Coggins. One to Rich. Strike inside corner. Jackson, the right fielder. I think this is well re worth repeating. Jackson, the right fielder, seldom has played any Oriole batter in deep right. 1-1. One, one. High pop-up. Third baseman Bando right near the bag. Under it, and there's the third out. At the end of seven, the A's three and the Orioles two. One more final score in pro football. This just in. Cleveland beat Cincinnati 17 to 10. So that final, along with the other two we previously gave you, Miami 31, the New York Jets 3, and the Green Bay Packers 16 to 14 over the New York Giants. In case you missed uh, the brief details of what happened in the playoff games on Saturday, Baltimore won the first American League playoff game, and Cincinnati took the first in the National League series, and that's because the proven winners will again be pitching against proven winners, which means that both teams going into Sunday's second games with that advantage and a little more. Jim uh, Catfish are going for the A's in the game you're listening to right now against uh, Dave McNally. And later on, John Matlack will be on the mound for the New York Mets against Don Gullett of the Cincinnati Reds. Saturday, Pete Rose and Johnny Bench hit home runs for the Cincinnati Reds to enable Cincinnati to take a 2-1 win over the New York Mets in game one. 
And in the American League, Jim Palmer struck out 12 Oakland batters as Baltimore rolled to a 6 to nothing victory. Well, the matter of the outcome of this afternoon's game, box office sale tickets to the 1973 World Series game to be played in Baltimore if the Orioles beat Oakland in the American League Championship Series begins Tuesday, 9 a.m. at the West Side Ticket Windows at Memorial Stadium here in Baltimore. Sale will continue daily through Friday between 9 in the morning and 6 in the evening. Bill? The Oakland eighth inning and the leadoff seller, Bert Campanaris. High from McNally in ball one. Campanaris began the game with a home run on McNally's second pitch of the afternoon. Matter of fact, all the A's runs have been on solo shots. Rudy and Bando broke the tie in the sixth inning. 1-0 pitch to Campanaris. Foul to the right, one ball, one strike. When you sit back a home plate and uh, you look down at Campanaris from a broadcasting booth, uh, the way he starts to lean to the front of the box, the way he cocks his bat, the movements of his bat, and the way he also moves his body. I have a feeling that Campanaris looks like a cat inside a cage and trying to break loose and get free. McNally just slowing down his tempo against Campanaris. Now he goes to him 1-1. Changeup is in the dirt, two balls and one strike. Looks like he might have turned that pitch over. Activity in the uh, Oriole bullpen right now with Jackson and Reynolds. Grant Jackson and the bullet, Bob Reynolds. Today's crowd being announced at over 48,000 paid. McNally to Campanaris here in the eighth inning, two and one. Strike is called. Campanaris started to go, changed his mind, and Bill Haller came up with the call strike. The official paid attendance is 48,425. Much, much higher than yesterday. As a matter of fact, it's a good six to 7,000 higher. Today's crowd is the uh, second largest in American League Championship uh, Series history. Phil Itzo telling everybody uh, through the press and radio sections, this is the second largest crowd ever. The largest crowd, I think, was at Detroit. 2-2 two -two pitch. Bounced over the mound. Back of second base. Gritch gets it, goes late to first base. Gritch got it as he and Belanger were going after the grounder back of second base. Gritch got the backhanded pickup, made a throw late to Powell, and Campanaris is on. A leg hit by Campanaris on the infield roller up the middle. Joe Rudy. Here's Joe Rudy now. He has singled and homered in three at bats. Campanaris with the base hit has his second hit in this game. That uh, crowd in Detroit last year for the final game in the best of five series that went all the way was 50,000 plus. Our crowd today is 48,000 plus. Rudy has flied to right, single to center, and he began the sixth inning and snapped it to a 1 1 tie with a home run to the opposite field. Powell will go right to the bag and hold on Campanaris. Now Rudy can hit the ball as he proved in the sixth inning. Can hit the ball all over the ballpark. So he's played to left and to right by both Bumbrey and left and Coggins and right. Here's an easy toss by McNally to first base. Bumbrey gives up a part of left field to uh, Rudy, as does Coggins in right field and Blair plays him in straightaway center. Rudy is very tough to defense. McNally will look to Campanaris, throw again that way towards Powell, and Campy is back. Two of these uh, Oakland days have a pair of base hits apiece. Campanaris the runner, and this fellow the batter, Rudy. Another throw towards the Campanaris lady, sliding back in feet first. Now, Rudy getting, I'm sure, a little bit over-anxious because he came to the batter's box many, many seconds ago to try to take on McNally, so he's still waiting for McNally to go to him. Dave looking at that campy lead and comes to the plate. A butt attempt is missed by Rudy, and it's strike one. Rudy looking back at uh, plate umpire Haller as if to say, I didn't think I offered for it. No balls and one strike. The infield single by Campanaris to begin the top of the eighth inning. The sixth Oakland hit in the ballgame. They've got six hits with their 3-2 lead. The Orioles have five hits.
McNally obviously slowing down, concentrating on Williams, also concentrating on Campanaris. An easy throw again to Powell. Now, Campanaris uh, did steal a base yesterday. A matter of fact, it came after his first plate appearance when he stole against Jim Palmer. Brooks Robinson tightening up at third base right back of the grass. Campanaris a good lead against the left-hander, so McNally goes after him again. One thing about Campanaris, although he has the good lead, he retreats back to the bag very, very quickly. His lead right now, not as long as it was before. Now he does get it just as long. McNally looks, comes to the plate. Outside, one ball, one strike. Since uh, the home run wallop by Rudy and Bando in the sixth inning, and then an Oriole comeback with a run in the bottom of the sixth inning. There has been kind of a kind of a hushed attitude to this crowd of better than 48,000. Rudy, the right hand batter, waiting one and one, and he has to wait because there's McNally throwing again over towards the Campanaris extra long lead. McNally rechecking with Williams and rechecking that campy lead. His 1-1 pitch is butted and fouled straight back off the chest protector of catcher Williams. It's one ball and two strikes. Now Rudy will look out again at third base coach Irv Noren to see if they've taken off the bunt sign now with a one and two count. Noren uh, running the sign that have been flashed to him from the Oakland dugout from the skipper Dick Williams. That Jackson Reynolds bullpen activity still going on with Oakland batting, a runner on, and nobody out in the eighth. Campanaris back again on a hard move by McNally. Of course, everybody, especially infielders, become a little impatient when this goes on. Every time a pitcher throws to first base or anywhere, you can see those infielders move around and move the feet as they rub them on the infield dirt. The slow checking McNally, one and two. Here it comes, a ground foul between the bag and third base coach Norin. We're still at one and two. Tomorrow afternoon, again, we'd like to remind you about uh, the broadcast time out of the Oakland Coliseum. We will join you tomorrow, Eastern Time, at 3.25 p.m. That is Eastern Time tomorrow. The actual ball game in the Coliseum tomorrow begins at 12.30 Pacific Time. McNally to the plate, one and two. Low, two balls and two strikes. Now, yesterday's game, uh, after a big Oriole rally, in the opening inning, when, in which they knocked out Vida Blue, was kind of a, a comfortable ball game the rest of the way. And the game today, exactly opposite. There's nothing comfortable about what's been happening. Campanaris will start now to get as much as he can away from Powell's hold. A long look by McNally into Williams, and he'll give Campanaris a look. Campanaris runs. The pitch is bounced towards Belanger. He's got no play to second, does throw to first, and in time. Belanger throws out Rudy, and Rudy almost got a ground ball by Belanger because with Campanaris running, Belanger was moving towards second base. The ground ball was hit just to the third base side of second. Suddenly you saw Belanger put on the brakes, play the ground ball, knew he couldn't get Campanaris, but did get Rudy. So with one out, you can have Campanaris now at second base and bring up Bando, the third baseman. Bando has walked. He had a, what looked like a home run bid come off his bat in the third inning. And then Bumbrey leaped the left field fence to bring it down and take away a home run Bando did. Then Bando did homer in the sixth inning. Campanaris with one out, away from second. McNally's look and his pitch with Campanaris running. The throw to third base is not in time. Campanaris has stolen third. The pitch was a bit up and outside. 
for a ball one call to Bando. With Campanaris running, Williams' throw was slightly to the fair side of third base. Brooks Robinson reached up for about a shoulder-high throw, and Campanaris came sliding under it to steal third and now put pressure on the infield. That's Bando's second steal in this series. Not in this game, in the series. He had one yesterday. All four bird infielders back of the grass with McNally going to Sal Bando, 1-0. Long drive to deep left. Bunbury looks up, and it is another Bando home run. A two-run Bando shot makes it 5-2. to two. All the runs on the long shot. Solos by Campanaris, Rudy, and Bando. And now Bando again with a two-run homer here in the eighth. 5-2 open. Reggie Jackson is the batter. He's been collared by McNally. Guide out in the first, fanned in the fourth, struck out again in the sixth. McNally winding, dealing low in ball one. The Oakland bat completely silenced by Jim Palmer yesterday, but not by McNally today, not at all. The wind-up and the 1-0 pitch. Bounce towards third. Brooks Robinson does the backhand job with it. Over to Powell, and there's out number two. Two away, and Gene Tennis, the batter. He's been collared also and fanned twice. Let's pause right now for station identification. This is the Orioles Baseball Network. This is the American Forces Radio and Television Service. At 790 and 1420, this is American Forces Radio. Bill O'Donnell back with you, along with Chuck Thompson in the top of the eighth inning, and Gene Tennis is the batter with two out, high in ball one. We've just received information that uh, Bando getting two home runs in this game becomes the third player in American League playoff history to hit two home runs in the game. The others, Powell and Jackson. 1-0 to Tennis. Low inside, it's ball two. Two balls and no strikes. Five runs, seven hits, and the A's are leading as they're batting here in the eighth, and they're leading five to two. They now have their biggest lead in the game. 2-0 dished up by McNally. It's ball three way outside. Three balls and no strikes. The A's led one to nothing, and then the Birds tied it in the first. The A's made it three to one in the sixth inning on the homers by Rudy and Bando. The Orioles got one back, and their half trailed three to two. Now we're down five two. McNally wheels in the 3-0. and Swing and a miss. The green light at tennis. Three balls and one strike now. McNally's next pitch is high and tight right to the chin of tennis, and he picks up a two-out walk. And speaking of walks, uh, walking to the mound is Earl Weaver. Weaver has motion to his bullpen. I would suspect he'll bring in the right-hander Reynolds with a right-hand batter Darren Johnson do. So uh, before Reynolds comes on the scene with a new Oriole pitcher making his way to the mound, let's pause for a moment. Prior to the game, Army Sergeant Preston Clough talked, who talked with Eddie Watt. Now, Watt normally comes in as the first reliever for the Baltimore Orioles, but Watt, of course, is not doing that in recent weeks, and he talks about the man who's coming to the game right now. Well, this year, uh, Reynolds has had an outstanding year, and he's pitched real well for it, so uh, if I was managing the ball club, I would probably have to go to Bob as, as the first uh, first offer out of the bullpen, and uh, in a, especially in a short situation, if I get a chance to pitch long relief, I'd be more than happy to do that, or short relief, either one, it just... Uh, uh, it doesn't make any difference. I, I enjoy playing, and uh, any time I get a chance, I try to do the very best I can. That's Eddie Watt, a member of the Oriole bullpen, talking about himself and also about the man who is being signaled into the game right now, Bob Reynolds, who is being asked to come on here in the eighth inning and see what he can do about shutting down the Oakland A's, who lead this ball game by the score of 5-2, to two, home run figuring, Campanaris for Oakland, Rudy for Oakland, and Bando, two of them for the A's. 
Well, Dave McNally has been uh, lifted by manager Weaver, and in his place now comes uh, the right-hander Bob Reynolds, the bullet. McNally this afternoon worked seven and two-third innings, allowing seven hits, walked two, struck out seven, and uh, allowed five runs. And uh, from the bullpen now comes the hard-throwing bullet, Bob Reynolds. Now, Reynolds on the year against the Oakland A's has uh, been in two ball games and has been charged with one defeat, working a total of five innings and allowing four hits. And the only game he lost was a 6-5 verdict to Roland Fingers in a 10-inning ball game back on the 8th of July here in Baltimore against uh, Oakland. Uh, Gene Tennyson home run in the 10th inning to win that ball game. Reynolds, other than uh, that appearance against the Oakland A's, has been nothing but scintillating for the Orioles coming out of the bullpen this year. For Reynolds in the regular season, he made 42 appearances, winning seven and losing five, 111 innings to an earned run of 1.86. So Bob Reynolds is the hard-throwing right-hander to take over now for Dave McNally against the right-hand swings of Darren Johnson and back to Bill. All right, Reynolds trying to get uh, the final out now on the top of the eighth inning. And it's Darren Johnson, the designated hitter. Johnson against McNally had a uh, base hit. He hits the ground ball towards second base. Belanger, the shortstop, has it. Flips the Gritch for the fourth play. So it just takes Reynolds one pitch to get the last out and wrap up a two-run open day. At the end of seven and a half, the A's five and the Orioles two. Well, if you've been with us all along, you will recall that early in the ballgame, Sal Bando came within a foot and a half of hitting a home run. And at that time, we let you listen to some comments that Sal Bando had with Preston Clough before the game about how he generally does against Dave McNally. Now, two home runs later, let's again listen to what he had to say about a Dave McNally. Well, uh, yesterday you seem to be having your problems with the uh, right-handed Palmer. You're going against the left-hander of McNally today. Have you had good luck with him in the past? Well, well let's put it this way. We've had our good days and bad days like anybody else, and uh, we just hope today's a good day. You personally, though, how have you done against Dave McNally? I've had, like I said, I've had my good days. He's gotten me out. He's a good pitcher. He's supposed to get you out, and I feel that I'm a decent hitter, so I should get my hit. So uh, it's just a matter of if I can get him at the right time. You're going to play uh, differently uh, around the uh, hot corner today, especially on the first two hitters in the Baltimore lineup? Right, well, I'll play in and uh, make them swing the bat and don't let them bunt because of their speed and, you know, play them like you do with Pete Rose and Joe Morgan. And uh, if we can keep them off base, we got a chance to beat these guys. Appreciate it. Thank you very much, Sal. Thank you. Sal Bando of the Oakland A's, and yes, it has been a good day against Dave McNally as Bando has driven in three of Oakland's five runs as Oakland takes a 5-2 to two lead over the Baltimore Orioles with the Orioles batting in the bottom half of the eighth inning. So let's get back to the action at Memorial Stadium, Baltimore. Tommy Davis, a uh, good day yesterday in the opening game and also a productive game today. One base hit, three times at bat, a run batted in. So in this series, Davis is four for eight. Catfish Hunter works. He's got strike one called, admired by Tommy down at his knees. Tommy Davis will be followed by Powell and Williams in the bottom of the eighth inning. Craig again. He moved it to the outside corner about belt high to Davis. Jackson, the right fielder, as he's done every time against Tommy Davis, over towards the right field line and not deep at all. Here's a foul off the end of the bat and straight upstairs. Powell kneeling on deck. Williams also waiting impatiently back in the Oriole dugout. 0-2. Oh Outside and just off the corner. It's one ball and two strikes. Hunter's got the ball in the glove. He'll start to reach in and wind. Right-hander to right-hander, one and two. Line drive, center field. Tommy Davis has another base hit. His fifth hit in the playoff. His second hit today. Bird's got to have a big rally here in the eighth inning. They need three to tie, four to go ahead, and Boo Powell, the batter. He is over in this game, over three. Has not gotten the ball by the infield. He has looked at a strike. He has popped to the shortstop, and he has bounced to the first baseman. 
Now, Jackson is going deeper against Powell than he did against Davis, but he's not really what you call playing deep right field. Now he does go deeper. The windup and the pitch to Powell is outside ball one, and this causes Foxy to run the ball back to the mound. That open bullpen getting warm, getting hot again with left-hander Knowles and right-hander Fingers. When Powell batted in the first, in the fourth, and in the sixth inning, Jackson did not play him deep, but now he is deep. Tennis, the first base, but not holding with Davis. Swing and a miss. Powell was out in front, lunging, and over a low breaking ball in his cut. One ball, one strike. Powell has glanced to third base coach Billy Hunter. The stretch by Hunter, and the catfish to Powell. The swing and another miss. I've got to be honest, Powell does not look good in his swing. Looks almost helpless and looks weak in his cut. One ball and two strikes. Powell has really not had in this game what amounts to a good cut with the bat. One and two. Way outside. He tried to make Boog chase a high pitch. Two balls and two strikes. Davis starts to lead. Tennis backs up behind him. Hunter to Powell. There's a ground foul nubbed off the lower part of the bat and right by the first base coach, Dollar. Powell gave it as hard a rip as he could. He was in front of the pitch, did get the bat on it, and bounced it slowly foul. 2-2 to Powell. It stays. Tennis uh, between pitches moves right towards Tommy Davis, but at no time does he go to the bag. And when Catfish Hunter starts to come forward, Tennis goes deeply behind the Tommy Davis lead. 2-2 to Boog Powell. Outside, Powell was lunging. The pitch was a changeup outside. Three balls, two strikes. Jackson, the right fielder, is squatting down in front of the warning track, and now he starts to straighten up and goes deeper towards the track. 3-2 to Powell. What about Davis? He stays. The pitch is popped up, foul towards the Oriole dugout. Fossey, the catcher. Bando, the third baseman, is back behind the dugout now to play. Well, nobody, of course, has the edge right here, either Hunter or Powell. But Powell feels a little bit better because it looked when the ball came off his bat, hopping to the Oriole dugout, it appeared that maybe Fossey or Bando might have a shot at it. So Catfish and Boog will go after each other again. One on, nobody out. Oakland leading 5-2, to two, the Birds batting in the bottom of the eighth. Another payoff pitch is on the way. Brown tapper towards shortstop Campanera. Throws to second, one out. Green to first, the throw is late. Powell is safe. An easy ground ball to shortstop Campanera. He made his throw to Green at second, forcing Davis. And then Green to tennis did not get the twin killing. Powell is on with one out, and the batter is Earl Williams. When Williams set a high pop-up into shallow center in the sixth inning, I think everybody in the ballpark said, whoops, there's out number two. But instead, Williams wound up with a run batted in and with a two-bagger when Mangual, the center fielder, and shortstop Campaneris collided. Mangual hit Campaneris in the rear, knocked him off balance, and knocked the ball away from Campaneris. And that also gave the Orioles their second run because Coggins crossed the plate. One on, now one out. Tennis not holding again. He's behind the Powell lead this time. Line foul behind the Oriole dugout and quite a row, a number of seats back of the dugout. A wicked screaming foul behind the Oriole dugout. In deep left is Rudy. Backed up better than average depth is Mangual in center. Campanaris, the shortstop, cut to his right side, cut to the hole. 
Bando is deep at third base, about a long stride inside the foul line. Hunter strike one pitch. Foul back this way. Now it's 0 2. The second game of the National League Championship Series at Cincinnati is underway. No score between the Mets and the Reds in Cincinnati in the first inning. Of course, the Reds lead in that series, one victory to none on their late inning home runs yesterday. One by Rose, the other one by Bench after the Mets had gone ahead one to nothing. Hunter, strike two to Williams. Here it is. Breaking ball, way outside and down. One ball and two strikes. Earl knocked in two runs yesterday in Palmer's six-nothing win. He has knocked in one of the two Oreo runs today. Right-handed to right-hander, one and two. Check swing, popping foul back on the screen. against the Orioles this year. Hunter made uh, four starts. Did not have a complete game in those four starts, but did pick up three victories. Lifetime against Baltimore clubs. He has won 17 games and dropped 14. One, two to Earl Williams. Low, didn't miss by much. It looked like it had the outside corner, but it was under the knees. Two balls, two strikes. Williams in the middle of the box. Keeps waving that wood back and forth. The two tour. High popping foul. We'll reach the seats upstairs. It's pretty obvious that Jackson in right field does not expect Williams to go deep his way. He has played to Williams in. And now on that last pop foul, Jackson goes back again. Hunter reaches the rubber and looks into Fosse. 2-2 Two -two pitch. Change up line to left center. It'll be a base hit. Powell hits the second and stays there as the ball is played by the left fielder, Rudy. Rudy cut off. An alley hit into left center. So Williams at first. Davis at second. The Orioles, needing three to tie, were about to bring up Blair and instead will bring on the left-hand swinging Terry Crowley. Earl Williams, the ex-National Leaguer, who never got into any kind of postseason activity with the Braves, who in his first year with the Orioles is in postseason activity for the first time, had two hits yesterday, and he's got two more today. So Williams stands at first, and Powell stands at second. And now they're announcing Crowley, Terry Crowley, to bat for Blair. Now, the Orioles do not have great speed on the bases. As soon as Crowley was announced, Earl Weaver made move number one, and here is Dick Williams, perhaps, to make move number two. Williams has the left-hander to bring on. Darrell Knowles, if he wants. He did bring fingers on briefly yesterday. Now, Williams has not motioned to the bullpen. Not yet. Now he does. He says the right-hander. Didn't he say the right-hander? It looked like he pointed to the right arm, and if we're correct, that means fingers and not nose. Catfish Hunter is through. Before we tell you about uh, the relief pitcher coming on, thought we'd bring in at this time uh, Elrod Hendricks, who is in uniform, but is not playing in the playoffs. He, of course, has suffered a dislocated ankle many weeks ago on the road. And we asked Elrod before the game, Elrod, uh, you know, you're in uniform. You can't take part in the playoffs. And we wonder just how nervous Elrod Hendricks feels. Well, uh, Bill, yesterday I was real nervous uh, for some reason. Normally, uh, if I'm playing, I just think of it as another game. That's the only thing you can really play the game. And uh, 
Don't play any kind of playoff or World Series game. Just think of it as another game while she'd be uptight all, all night or all day. I just uh, felt real nervous yesterday. I sat in the dugout and I paced uh, up and down for uh, about five or six minutes. And then finally I decided I was going to go inside and sit there around for a while. How much cheerleading do you do in the dugout? Well, yesterday I was limited. I could only cheer when our ball club was on the field. Or uh, when we was up at bat, I should say, because... Uh, Mr. Williams didn't want me to do, uh, get on uh, Reggie Jackson or uh, Vida Blue, but uh, lucky for me that Vida did that uh, last too long, so I started getting the other guys out there. But I try to cheer as much as I can for as long as I can. Well, from the Oakland bullpen comes the uh, right-handed Roland Fingers, who got the final out for the Oakland A's in the eighth inning yesterday as Baltimore won the opening game. Right into the face of the left-handed uh, pinch hitter, Terry Crowley. And I guess a lot of people expected perhaps that uh, Darryl Knowles would be summoned. Had that happened, uh, I guess it's reasonable then to assume the manager Weaver might have made still another move with a fellow like Don Baylor. Well, instead of the left-handed Darryl Knowles, it is the right-hander, Fingers. And Terry Crowley has been announced as the pinch hitter to face Fingers. The story on Catfish Hunter, seven and the third inning. Seven hits, three walks, five strikeouts. And the two runs, and on the mound now comes Fingers uh, to face Terry Crowley. In uh, game two in Cincinnati, the New York Mets have failed to score in their half of the first inning. The Reds are now batting against John Matlack. Gullett is pitching for the Reds, Matlack for the New York Mets. No score. They have just started out there. They're in the bottom of the first inning. Well, here in Baltimore, it's the Oakland A's five and the Baltimore Orioles two. We're now on the bottom of the eighth inning. Oriole runners, Williams at first base, Powell at second base, and the pinch hitter, Terry Crowley at the plate and right back to Bill O'Donnell. Well, some uh, people very close to baseball, if they wanted to expert uh, what Williams just did, said, well, he should bring on the left-hander. But what Williams has done is brought on his best relief pitcher. Fingers to the pinch hitter, Crowley. Strike. He works it on the outside corner and down. Crowley batting for Blair. Fingers relieving for Catfish Hunter. With two runners, Powell at second and Williams at first. Oakland's lead is three runs, five to two. Fingers with a look back and his delivery. High drive into left field. Rudy breaking back. He's in front of the warning path and makes the catch. Crowley sent it to the opposite field and fairly deep, but not deep enough. Batting for Blair, Crowley skies out, and here is Brooks Robinson. Now it's not Williams, but it's uh, West Stock. It's Stock or Williams, let's see. It is Williams. It is Dick Williams. We thought at first it might be the pitching coach, West Stock. Williams has rushed out. Again for another mound meeting. Now, this one is legal. If he goes out again, of course, Fingers must go out. Williams making sure that Fingers decides how he throws to Brooks Robinson. Williams only stayed out there about 15 seconds. Jawed with the Fingers and Bando and Fossey and then rushed back to the dugout. Two on, two out. Fingers stretching, and now he goes to Brooks Robinson. Swing and a miss. He got jammed with a fastball into the letters. A hot fast one by Fingers to go ahead on one. Now, normally, the best stuff you see from Fingers is a sinking fastball and a slider. 0 oh and 1. Bounding ball up the middle for a base hit. Powell is rounding third. He is going to score. Brooks Robinson takes the pitch up the middle for a ground single and makes it 5 to 3. Brooks' his first hit today, and his first hit in the series brings over a run. Powell scores from second. Williams goes to second. And Bobby Grich will stand in. The Orioles now creep to within two runs in the bottom of the eighth inning. The run scored by Powell is charged to Hunter. Grich is hitless today. Like Robinson was, he's also hitless in the series. Now it's Brooks off first base and Williams off second. Fingers setting, kicks and throws. Cut and a miss, and it's strike one. Time has been called by the third base coach, Billy Hunter. Maybe a runner for Williams or Robinson, let's see. 
They are looking out to the Oriole bullpen. It would appear the gate is going to fly open and somebody's going to come out of the bullpen. Don Hood is coming out of the Oriole bullpen, uh, the young left-handed pitcher. We would suspect that Hood would become a runner. And for Brooks Robinson. Don Hood running for Brooks Robinson. Now, if you're asking why, well, I think the reason would be twofold. Number one, the runner at first base is the tie run. Another reason, in case uh, there's a close play at second base, the Orioles want to get as much speed as they can towards second base. So the quicker runner Hood comes on the scene for Brooks Robinson. And that, of course, will necessitate a change at third base when the top of the ninth inning rolls around. Very likely, Larry Brown would go there. It's strike one to Bobby Griff. Hood off first base. Williams off second. Suddenly, Fingers breaks off the rubber. Fingers with the arm draped down the side, and just as he starts to stretch, Bobby Gritz gets a little edgy, and Bobby steps out. Now they're both ready on one, and the pitch is on the way. High, one ball, one strike. Don Hood running for Brooks Robinson. Ahead of him is Williams at second base. It is five to three, Oakland leading, Baltimore batting in the home east. Fingers, tall right-hander, 1-1 one, one delivery. Outside, he didn't miss the corner by much. Two balls and one strike. First baseman tennis, deep and very close to that foul line to Gritch. 2-1 delivery. High, three and one. Bobby, Bobby had a notion to go and then held up. Every once in a while, just to prove the tension of this game, all you have to do is look to the right fielder, Reggie Jackson. Every once in a while, Jackson will get down on one knee and just try to relax that way and then to come back up and straighten up. 3-1 pitch to Gritch. It's ball four. The bases are loaded. Belanger is due, but Belanger will be called back. And Don Baylor will be the batter. I would say that half the crowd here at the stadium now is starting to rise and applaud Baylor. Three on, two out. A left-hander and a right-hander going at it again in the Oakland pen. Knows the left-hander still throwing. The right-hander joining him is Horacio Pena. Rich is asking the first base umpire Nestor Shylock for time. Gritch wants to go back to the Oriole dugout. Or talk to Don Baylor. He wants to talk to Baylor, I'm sure, concerning Roly Fingers. Now, Baylor played all the way yesterday. Baylor yesterday went two for three, knocked in a run, scored a run, scored two runs. Here's the announcement, Baylor for Belanger. Five to three is the Oakland lead. And here are the runners. Rich at first, Hood at second, and Williams at third. Baylor batting for Belanger. Two out. Fingers will go full windup, lancing the third, pump kicks and throws. Inside and almost hit Baylor at the knees. Ball one. There's only one thing to do in a ball game like this. Just lean forward to the edge of your seat. And that's what we're doing, everybody else is doing. The one hole pitch is strike called on the inside corner. One ball, one strike, base is loaded with two outs. We'll look at the runners for you. Williams at third. Hood running for Robinson at second. Rich just walked and he's off first. 1-1 one, one to the pinch hitter. Baylor swings and doesn't get the breaking ball. It's one ball and two strikes. Oakland.
Oakland five, Baltimore three, in a tension-packed, real nail-biter in the bottom of the eighth inning. Fingers has an edge on the count, one and two. He agrees with signs and works. Ground ball by the mound. Short second base. Campanera throws to first. It's in time. They just get Baylor for the third out. For the second time in this game, the Orioles leave the bases loaded, but they do score a run. At the end of eight, Oakland five, Baltimore three. In college football, here's how the top ten did on Saturday. Ohio State beat Washington State 27-3. Nebraska beat Minnesota 48-7. Southern California defeated Oregon State 21-7. It was Alabama over Georgia 28-14. Michigan defeated Oregon 24 to nothing. Oklahoma down Miami of Florida 24 to 20. It was Penn State over the Air Force 19 to 9. Tennessee beat Kansas 28 to 27. Notre Dame down Michigan State 14 to 10. And LSU beat Florida 24 to 3. And by those scores, there's not much reason to believe that the top 10 will change. But uh, the coaches are the ones that vote on that, and they might decide that uh, somebody should move in there. We'll have to wait and see until Tuesday. In the, you don't necessarily believe everything you see that comes over the Western Union ticker department, and we're checking on this. They report that uh, Jim Bakken has kicked a 68-yard field goal for St. Louis. But as I say, you don't always believe everything you see coming over the Western Union ticker. So we'll try to get that scored away and find out just exactly what it is that he did kick as far as a field goal. I would think if it really was that far, they would emphasize it a little bit more than they would by just giving the distance of it. So we're checking. As Crowley batted for Paul Blair, Blair leaves center field is out of the ball game, and Coggins moves into center field, and Crowley, who batted for Blair, now goes into right field. So here are the changes again. Brown at third base, Frank Baker at shortstop. In the outfield, Rich Coggins is now the center fielder, and Terry Crowley is now the right fielder. Five to three, Oakland going to the top of the ninth inning and again, Bill O'Donnell. Chuck, uh, the lower end now of this A's order. And Mangual, the seventh man in the attack, is thrown a strike by right-hander Reynolds. Bob had to make only one pitch picking up for McNally last inning, and he got Johnson on a roller and an eventual force play against Tennis at second base. Strike one to Mangual, who is 0 for 3 in this game and hitless in the series. In the dirt and outside, one ball, one strike. Manguel has fanned, fly deep to center, and rolled to short. Reynolds working rapidly. In he comes. A foul to the upper deck. One ball and two strikes. In the Oriole ninth inning, and we're still, of course, uh, quite a spell away from that, the two batters are Bumbry, Coggins, and Davis. Reynolds to Manguel. Just outside with a hard, quick slider. Two balls, two strikes. Let's pause for station identification on the Orioles Baseball Network. This is the American Forces Radio and Television Service. You're listening to the voice of information for the American Forces at 790 and 1420. 2-2 to Manuel. Low and all break, so it's all the way. Three and two. The infield here in the ninth inning has Brown and Baker coming on the left side, replacing Robinson and Belanger at third and short. Rich and Powell stay on the right side. A change in right field. Crowley for Coggins. Rich, of course, goes to center field, replacing Blair. 3-2 to the batter. Ground ball, bottom mound to the right of second base and up the middle for a base hit. It went between the bag and second baseman, Gritch and Manguel, with his first hit today and his first hit in the playoff series. Now activity has been going on the last couple of innings in both bullpens, and now it's on again in the Oriole pen, this time with Eddie Watt. To give Watt more time... And also to make sure that uh, Reynolds knows the right thing to serve Fosse, manager Bamberger has been dispatched to the mound by manager Weaver. Bambi standing there with Williams and with, uh, with uh, Reynolds. And just off to one side is third baseman Larry Brown. Manguel hit the eighth by the A's. They had seven after uh, knocking out McNally with five runs. Posse, a right-hand swinger. Three runs, three earned runs, 
He squares. He bunts to the first base side of the mound. Reynolds runs to the bag himself, and he wins the foot race. No contest in the foot race between Reynolds and Fosse. But Fosse does get the successful sacrifice bunt. He went up there to do what he was told, and he did that. So have Manguel now advance to second and bring up Dick Green, the ninth man in the order. Fosse, sacrifice bunting and out unassisted all the way to Reynolds. Dick Green has fanned, fly to center, and bounced to short. A little high and tight in ball one. Here's a second inning score on the National League game, game two at Cincinnati. The Reds nothing, the Mets nothing. That's at the end of two. We're sustained in that series. We'll switch to New York tomorrow afternoon. Ours, of course, goes out to Oakland. Reynolds with his 1-0 to green. Line foul to the right field seat. One ball, one strike. Reynolds uh, with not just a shrug of the shoulders, but kind of a, a forced, relaxed shrug of the shoulders. One and one. Foul straight back our way. One ball and two strikes. Campanaris is kneeling on deck. He'll come up after uh, Reynolds and Green finish challenging each other. Between each pitch, uh, Reynolds vacates the rubber. And now he comes back in to lean through and get the Williams sign. His glance back to Manguel's lead. His pitch is hit foul to the right. One and two. The wind, which has uh, been blowing out all afternoon, is now blowing a little bit stronger. Blowing out towards dead center field. Green is right to the front of the box against the bullet. Here's a swing and a miss. The ball gets by Williams, comes back to the screen, and safe at first base is Green. Meanwhile, advancing to third is Manguel. Green, Green swung at an inside pitch, didn't get it for the third strike. On the pass ball charge to Williams, also give Reynolds what really is a meaningless strikeout. Manguel has gone to third, and on the pass ball, third strike, George to Williams. Green is the runner at first. First and third now occupied, and up comes Campanaris. Twice in this game, he really stung the starter, Dave McNally, with a leadoff homer to begin ball game. Then with an infield base hit in the eighth inning, and he eventually scored on Bando's second home run, and that was a two-run shot in the eighth inning. Powell stands to this side of first base to hold on Green. Runners at the corners. Here's a line drive to right field for a base hit. Manguel has scored to make it six to three. On his way to third base is Green, and once again Campanaris has delivered. He has figured now in three of the six Oakland runs, scoring two. One with a homer, and now driving in another one. So he has two runs batted in, three hits, and has figured in three runs. It is a 6-3 to three open lead, and for the first time, open scores without benefit of the long wallop. The batter is Joe Rudy. He has two hits and four bats, including a six-inning home run. Green stepping off third and away from the Powell hold is Campanaris from first. Campanaris runs, the pitch is low, pops out of the middle of Williams, so he has no throw. Campanaris, without a bid against him, steals his second base in this game. And his third steal of the series. So now both open runners in scoring spots, plus Campanaris. Green, of course, is still over at third. It's a ball one count to Rudy. Brown and Baker 
as third and short, couple of steps back of the grass, tighter to the other side, Gritch and Powell. Now Earl Williams is motioning Reynolds, let's throw outside and put Rudy on intentionally. There's ball two. Two balls, new strike. So they'll go after Bando with the bases loaded, and there's ball three. And there is ball four. A walk by Reynolds, an intentional pass to Rudy. And now Sal Bando, who has accounted for three open runs. Two homers, three runs batted in. Grant Jackson, the left-hander, joining Watt in the Oriole bullpen. Rudy, Campanaris, and Green at first, second, and third. Oakland ahead in the ninth inning, six to three. Batting Bando with one out, strike, one is called. Open runners now lead at every spot on the check by Reynolds. Bando swings and doesn't get his next one, so it's 0-2. Jackson is standing on deck. Bando is the sixth man to face Reynolds here in what right now is a one-run Oakland ninth. Green off third. Campanaris from second. And Rudy with a lead of first behind Powell, who's in tight. Swing and a miss. Bando chased a high one and strikes out. Bando chased a pitch out of the strike zone. And now we'll probably have Grant Jackson brought in. With Reggie Jackson coming up, Earl Weaver is marching to the mound. He's looking back into the dugout, probably checking with Bamberger to make sure that Jackson is ready. He has a motion that he wants Jackson yet. Weaver standing right at the mound, side to side, shoulder to shoulder, uh, with Reynolds, has looked in the dugout. He's probably gotten an affirmative nod of the head indicating, all right, Jackson is warm. He's ready to be brought in. So now Weaver makes his move. He tells the plate umpire, Haller, bring me the left-hander, and that means Grant Jackson. Well, the other half of the Orioles' uh, bullpen duo, uh, kind of a mainstay for them throughout the year, but in this year of the designated hitter, the bullpens have not been quite so important as they have been in bygone years, but the right-handed half, Bob Reynolds, has left the ball game, and from the Oriole bullpen now will come Grant Jackson. It means that Reynolds has worked one inning, uh, two uh, Oakland base hits, has given up one intentional walk, and has struck out two, and charged with a run. Of course, the men on base are his responsibility. We have Green at third base and Campaner at second. Rudy at first with two down here in the ninth inning, and the Oakland A's leading the Orioles by a score of six to three. And from the bullpen now will come Grant Jackson. And to get a quick look at uh, Jackson's effort against the Oakland A's this year, it has not been too good. He has been in two ball games in relief, pitching only an inning and two-thirds, allowing two hits, a run, walked about it, didn't strike out anybody. So Grant Jackson will now come on to take over against the left-handed swinging Reggie Jackson. Now Grant on the year for the Orioles. Came in 45 times, winning eight ball games without a defeat. In a total of 80 innings, all in relief, Grant Jackson worked to an earned run of 1.91. Striking out 47 batters in 80 innings and walking but 24. So the hard-throwing southpaw, Grant Jackson, has been summoned to take over now for Bob Reynolds. With two down and the bases loaded in the Oakland half of the ninth inning. And today it has been simply a story of the explosive power, the long ball power of the Oakland A's this afternoon as they uh, have hit not one but four home runs off starter Dave McNally. The greatest number against Dave in a given game of the past season has been two. And uh, I guess it might be safe to hazard a guess that this might be the first time in McNally's career that he has been touched for four home runs in a single ball game. But Campanera started the game with a solo shot. Then Rudy had a home run in the uh, sixth inning. Bando had the first of two in that same sixth inning. And then Bando with a two-run shot again in the eighth inning. So Reynolds is out, and Grant Jackson has come on, and Reggie Jackson will be at the plate, and we go right back to Bill. Reggie. All right, uh, the Jackson boys taking on each other. Grant against Reggie. Reggie is hitless in this game. He has fanned twice, slide out, and bounced up. Weaver has nominated Grant Jackson to get Reggie for the final out and go to the bottom of the ninth instead. 
Two out, bases loaded. Grant Jackson to Reggie Jackson, left-hander to left-hander, high and tight in ball one. Although the, the Orioles, before this playoff series, had not seen a regular ball game since a week ago yesterday, they did have uh, quite a number of inter-squad games this past week, and Jackson, like the rest of the relievers, also saw work. Grant Jackson to Reggie Jackson, 1-0. Breaking ball, fanned out and missed. Completely fooled was Reggie Jackson. He was looking for a fastball and got an off-speed sidearm snapper. One ball, one strike. Here's Dick Green off third base, plus Campanaris behind him away from second. And Rudy, the runner at first base, with a longer lead because Powell is playing deep. Jackson to Jackson, Grant to Reggie. Another breaking ball is tight and high. Two balls and one strike. Jackson leaning forward. He'll start rocking and winding. Now as he's peering in a little bit too long to Williams, Reggie Jackson decides, but he just feels a little bit over-anxious. He wants to get a bit more comfortable and has requested time from Bill Haller. Now Grant Jackson says he's ready. 2-1 from Grant. Reggie hits a high fly to right field. Crowley coming over and now in. Terry Crowley for the third out. Oakland has scored another run at the end of eight and a half innings. Oakland six, Baltimore three. Let's take a look at the pro football scoreboard for Sunday. These are all final scores. New England 24, Baltimore 16, Cleveland 17, Cincinnati 10, Green Bay 16, the New York Giants 14, a field goal by Chester Markle from 32 yards out with a second remaining wanted for the Packers. Miami 31, the New York Jets 3, it was Buffalo 27, Philadelphia 26, Pittsburgh over San Diego 38 to 21, and San Francisco has defeated Atlanta 13 to 9. In other action in the National Football League, at the end of three periods, New Orleans 14, Chicago 3, and in the fourth quarter, a couple of field goals by Chicago. So late in the ball game, New Orleans still leading Chicago. By the score of 14-9, to nine, that could be one of the bigger upsets of the day if New Orleans can hold that lead. Kansas City leads Denver 13-7 th uh, to seven after three periods. It's Los Angeles 31, Houston 12 after three periods. Well, the Orioles now come to the last half of the ninth inning, trailing the Oakland A's by three. It's Oakland six runs, nine hits and no errors. And the Orioles, three runs, eight hits, and again, no errors. On the mound, in relief of starter Catfish Hunter is Roland Fingers. And the Orioles will start the bottom of the ninth inning with the top of the batting order, Al Bumper. Well, and this crowd of uh, 48,000 eventually departs this, uh, this ballpark. The defensive memory they will carry away of this game will be Al Bunbury's feet against Al Bando earlier. And here's a young fella, Al Bunbury, to begin the bottom of the ninth inning. The Orioles need a big comeback. Fingers throws, and Fingers gets a strike. Bumbry, Coggins, and Davis, the top part of the Oriole order. Fingers rocking and kicking, in he comes. Strike is called, outside corner at the knees. Sando, as he's done all day, no matter what the count is on Bunbury, stays inside the bag and at the grass. Raleigh Fingers to Al Bunbury. Here's the strike two delivery. Foul right back to the seats, uh, just to this side of the Oriole dugout. Fingers uh, just challenged. Challenged Bunbury with a good-looking fastball. Al gave it a cut and got a piece of it, ripped it right back. So we stay at strike two. Fingers reaches in the glove, kicks, and throws. Strike three on the outside corner. Bumbry uh, beefing just for a couple of seconds at plate umpire Haller's third strike call. Four fingers, his first strikeout in relief. He faced uh, four men in relief last inning, got two of them. Gave up a base hit to Brooks Robinson, also a walk to Gritch. Now it's Rich Coggins' turn with two hits today. Two for four, plus the run scored. Bando plays Coggins at third exactly the same as he played Bumbry. One out, bases clean. 
Strike called to Coggins. Let her high outside corner. <laughs> the mustachioed right-hander. Rally fingers to Coggins. High pop-up around the plate. It's foul. Posse gets rid of the mask. He's there. He's made the play, and that's the second out. Coggins fouls out to the catcher. Now to keep things stirring. Put a little heat now onto the pot here in the ninth inning. Perhaps is Tommy Davis. Two hits, a run batted in. That's today. Five hits in the series. Five for nine so far. After batting over 500 against the A's during the regular season. The Orioles right now, at the moment, are one out away from losing their first postseason game in playoff history. In 69, 70, and 71, they did not lose the game at all to either Minnesota or the Oakland A's. They are down 6-3 to three and one out away in the ninth. The pitch to Tommy Davis, just off the outside corner, and ball one. Fingers caught Bumbry looking on a third strike, just got Coggins on a foul pop-up. Two out, base is empty, and the 1-0 to Tommy D is fouled to the upper deck, so it's one ball, one strike. Baltimore won yesterday, six to nothing, on the shutout job from Jim Palmer. Oakland, right now on the verge of locking up the playoff series before it goes to the West Coast. Fingers to Davis, one and one. Brown ball towards short. Campanaris plays a chest high, throws to first, the ball game is over. Oakland wins the game, six to three. And the 1973 American League Championship Series is square. One victory each.